When you open your mind to the impossible, sometimes you find the truth. Builderall is the most complete and affordable digital marketing platform. That's why most people think there's a catch. So, a free trial is the solution. Hey y'all, Bridget Bartlett here. I am the local business marketing training and support specialist with Builderall. Welcome to the Funnel Challenge. In this extended training course, I'm going to walk you through the steps of creating a sales funnel with a lead magnet, upsell, and downsell offer. We will be integrating the booking calendar, super checkout, membership areas, email autoresponder, and the webinar tool just to start. The best thing is there is no coding or plugins or additional subscriptions required. Builderall has all the tools in the same platform that easily integrate with one another. Upon completion of this funnel challenge, you will be given the funnel we are creating to use as a template for your own business to use, sell, or give as an incentive to upgrade to a Builderall plan. The first step to creating any sales funnel is to create a blueprint to make sure you have a well thought out plan before creating your pages. To do this, we're going to use the canvas. So let's go ahead and click into the Builderall canvas to access the app. And let's go ahead and click add funnel. And let's call this upsell downsell funnel blueprint. And we will just copy and paste this in the description and click next. Now from here, we can select the category that we want to work with. We can choose all of the different funnel templates. We can choose the ones that are designed to generate leads, generate sales, or create an event. Let's just go ahead and choose all. And we have some selections here to choose from. However, for this purpose, I just want to choose a blank canvas. And we'll choose an empty theme. So we'll go ahead and click select here. And now we have an empty blank canvas to get started building our funnel. So the first thing that we need to do is click the plus sign. And the first step of any funnel is an opt-in page or a registration page if you're making membership areas, which we are. So let's go ahead and choose an opt-in slash registration page. Now, after they've entered their email address, we want to send them to the email confirmation page because we want to always choose a double opt-in for a better quality list. So to do that, we need to right click on the form, edit element, and then we can choose pending subscribe. So let's choose confirm email page and we can just move this up here. Now, once they've confirmed their email, meaning they enter their email address on the opt-in page through the form. Okay, it will send them to the confirm your email page where it will have instructions that we will put in there that say, go to your email address, click the link in the email to confirm your email address. Once they have confirmed their email address, they will go to the first sales page to collect their lead magnet and also get their first offer. Okay, so let's go ahead and right click in the form again edit element, and then we want to choose a subscription confirmed page. And like I said, this will be the first sales page offer. So let's go ahead and choose a sales letter page and let's change the name of this to front end offer. We can do that by right clicking edit page. And then we can just change this here to front end offer. Now on this page, they can receive their lead magnet and also purchase our, the first offer. So, they can either make a purchase or they can leave, okay? So once they have made the purchase, we can send them to the upsell. So let's go ahead and right click in the checkout and edit element, and then we want to add a success page, which would be our upsell. So let's go ahead and choose a sales letter page, and let's right click on this to change the name to upsell. Now this is going to be the first time that we're going to give them a choice in this funnel because remember, the purpose of a sales funnel is to sell something, okay? So we're going to give them the option on the upsell page to purchase the upsell or they can go to a downsell page, okay? So if they purchase the upsell, we'll send them to a success page, which will be the thank you page. So we'll go ahead and choose that here. And if they do not purchase the upsell, we're going to send them to a downsell page. So let's go ahead and right click in the checkout, go to edit element, and then we'll click downsell. So that'll be another sales letter page. And let's change the name here by right clicking and edit page. And we'll call this downsell offer. 
Now with the downsell offer, they can either purchase the downsell offer or they can say no thank you and go to the thank you page. So let's go ahead and right click in the checkout, edit element, and then a success would be to the thank you page. So we already have that page created. So let's go ahead and select that page here because we want them going to the same thank you page. And then if they purchase the downsell offer, or if they do not purchase the downsell offer, they're still going to go to the thank you page. So let's go ahead and click downsell and then choose the thank you page again. So now that we have all of our pages connected, let me make sure that you really understand what's going on here, okay? So if you are the customer, you are entering your email address into this form. It will give you instructions here on this page that it sends you to that says, please go to your email, click the link to confirm your email. Once they've done that, they will go to the front end offer to receive their lead magnet and be offered the first item that we want to sell them. If they decide to not purchase the item, they will leave the funnel. If they decide to purchase the item, they will go through the checkout process and then they will receive an additional offer. So this is going to be our upsell offer. If they decide to purchase the upsell offer, they will go through the checkout and then they will go to the thank you page. If they decide to not purchase the offer, this is going to be the very first page that we give them a choice, okay? So if they do not purchase the offer, they're going to go to a downsell offer and that is this page here. Now, if they decide to not purchase the downsell offer, they're gonna go to the thank you page. If they decide to purchase the, th the downsell offer, they're gonna go still to the thank you page. Okay, so I hope that you're really starting to see this process here. So now we need to create some membership areas, okay? We need to have a membership area for the opt-in page because that's going to be where they register for our membership area. Then we need to create a membership area for the front-end offer, the upsell offer, and the downsell offer. So this is going to be four membership areas that we need to create. So to do that, we need to go to the thank you page, click the plus sign. We can find our membership page here. And let's go ahead and add three more. Click the plus sign on the thank you page, add another membership area, and one more time. Now let's go ahead and rename the pages just so that we can stay organized. So let's right click in the page, edit page, and this is going to be the lead magnet membership area. Let's right click on the second membership area and this is going to be the front end offer membership area. Let's go ahead and right click in the third membership area and this is going to be the upsell membership area. And then our last membership area is going to be the downsell. So let's right click in the fourth membership area. And now we have our entire blueprint created. Now keep in mind, the purpose of a sales funnel is to guide them along and give them very little options to skip around anywhere. If we wanted them to do that, we would be creating a website. But a sales funnel is an automated guide to help you walk through the sales process. And this is why sales funnels are so important and so efficient at automating your sales process. So someone could click in here. If you're running Facebook ads or Google ads or any type of ad and you want to generate sales, the best way is a sales funnel because they are opting in. You are putting your first offer in front of them. If they decide to check out, you're upselling them an additional offer they may be interested in. If they decide they don't want that, you can downsell them to maybe a cheaper option that they may be interested in. And then if they decide to not purchase that, you're sending them to a thank you page where you can actually promote these other offers as well, even if they didn't purchase them to give them basically a second chance to purchase, okay? And by creating membership areas, we are restricting the access to these areas. So these membership areas would be on the thank you page in the form of maybe a button or some way that they have an additional option to purchase any of these items, okay? But if they make it to the thank you page but they did not purchase the downsell offer, you don't want them to be able to access that. And that is why we need to have it restricted 
in a membership area. Now I know that this sounds complicated, but I'm going to show you in the next video how super simple this is as long as you stay organized. Okay. Now what we can do here is screenshot our blueprint and we can export and let's just call this blueprint funnel and we can save that here to our computer. And then if you pull this up here, you'll see that we have the blueprint to use as a guide when creating our, our pages. So now that we have the blueprint for our sales funnel, the next thing that we need to do is create the pages and I will teach you how to do that in the next video. So until then, go build it with Builderall. Hey y'all, Bridget Bartlett here. I am the local business marketing training and support specialist with Builderall. Welcome to step two of the funnel challenge. In the last video, I showed you how to create a blueprint for the pages we're going to need to include in our upsell and downsell funnel. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the cheetah builder we're going to use and then get started building the pages of our funnel. So to do that, we need to access our builder all back office. To access the cheetah app, we can simply click enter here. The first thing we need to do is create a new website. So we're just going to call this upsell funnel. Let's go ahead and just copy and paste that here. And we can choose a blank template. We can select a template that we already have in the gallery, or we can select a smart template. What we want to do today is create a blank template so that we can start creating the pages of the funnel that we need. So let's go ahead and click blank template. So you'll see once inside the builder, we already have one page created. That's the default home page. If you look at the top here, we can create a new page by clicking here. We can also publish our website by clicking the green publish button. If we want to edit the information in our Cheetah app profile, we can do that here. If we had multiple pages, we could click here to sort the pages in the order that we want them in, and then we would just click Save Sort. We could click here to create membership areas, and we're going to do that in our funnel, but I'm not going to explain that right now. I'll explain it later in the course. If we have the My Pages section highlighted, it'll show all of the pages that we have on our website here. We could click here to access our website overview and analytics, but since we have not published our website yet, there's no data to display. You can access the site settings here. So the title of our website is Upsell Funnel. You can change the title separator here. You can also change the address URL of our funnel. You can select which language you want your website to be in. You can also write a description here. You can toggle this switch on or off to add the Builderall affiliate button to your website. So if you want the watermark to be on the right, center, or left, you can choose that here. You can also choose the language of the link that you want it to share. You can toggle this switch on to enable the CRM and start collecting data on your website, or you can just toggle that off to keep it disabled. But I always recommend keeping that on. You can upload your own favicon here, and a favicon is simply the image at the top of the browser tab next to the website name. And you can choose any of the images you have or select file to upload a new one. Here is your SEO settings. So you can put any keywords you're trying to rank for here. You can add your meta tags here, robot, and add information here. If you need to add scripts, you can add that here. You can add your Facebook pixel in this box here and your Google Analytics code here in this box. You could click Save. Next, we have the global elements. A global element is any element that you want to be available on all the pages within your website. You could create pop-ups that will display at a specific time when they exit the page or as they're scrolling down. You can also create headers for each individual page or multiple pages. You could also create multiple headers for multiple different pages. The same thing with the footers here. If you are advertising to or in the European nations, you can click this button here to activate your GDPR settings. You can change the colors and positioning. You can change the text here. You can add additional text and then you can even click here to activate button reset cookies and then change some settings here. Since I am in the United States and I am not advertising to the European nations, I'm not going to go too much into detail on this. We'll just unclick that button there. We also have a super checkout system. So if you are interested in selling items on your website or you want to create affiliate programs for your website, you can do that here. And we'll go more into detail later as we're creating our products to put in our upsell and downsell funnel. You can also create a blog here, which we're not going to talk about today, but it's definitely important to know that you do have that option. You can also select browser notifications. So if you want to enable your browser notifications, you can simply do that by clicking this button here. If you want to disable 
you can do that here. If you want to send a notification within the browser, you can easily do that here. We'll just disable for now. And we also have our own booking app within the website builder. So we're going to go more into detail with this later on as we create our funnel. But for now, it's important to know where you can locate that. When we're ready to connect our domain, we can do that here simply by entering the domain name after we have changed the DNS settings. And you can click here to get more information on how to do that. Here we have a transfer option. So if you create your website for a client, you can transfer to their own account or you can duplicate and transfer and keep a copy for yourself. You can also go to the sitemap here, which is a little bit more advanced. So I'm not gonna go into detail about that. You can also go to the website here and back to home. So let's go back to my pages and let's start creating our pages for our upsell downsell funnel. Now I have already put a list here so that we can stay organized and I want to change the name of their very first page here to the registration page lead magnet page and this is so I can always remember while I'm creating the skeleton of the funnel I want to remember which page is which so it's really important at this stage to get really organized because once you start designing your page and connecting everything it's really important that you know which page is what okay so let's go ahead and we just want to change the name from home to registration page lead magnet and we can do that simply by clicking the three dots here and going to settings now we are controlling the settings of this specific page so let's go ahead and we'll just highlight and control V to paste we do want this to be the home page so we'll leave that at yes if we did not if we wanted another page to be the home page we could just simply click not but we'll keep this the home page let's go ahead and change the URL except we have symbols in there that we need to get rid of and we'll just go ahead and put all these words together and let's go ahead and paste the name to the title of the page if we wanted to add any descriptions we could do that here if we want to integrate our mailing boss key we could do that here if we want to add any tags to this page here's where we would put that page scripts we would just paste in this box here we can access the SEO settings here so we can add keywords that we want to rank for any meta tags. We can also redirect this page to another link. We could select this box if we did not want Google to index this page, meaning if we did not want it to be found through search engines, we could select that here. We could also choose a share image by selecting any of these images here and clicking save. So let's go ahead and we'll just use this as an example. And that would be our share image. You can connect any pop-ups that you've created here. And if we had pop-ups created, it would allow us to set the pop-ups to the action that we wanted to take, the timing that we wanted to display, and which pop-up we wanted to select. But since we don't have any created, they do not show up in the menu. But it's important to know where you can change that. Again, if we had any headers selected, it would show up here, but we could select which header we wanted for this specific page here, and the same with the footer. So let's go ahead and click Save. And now we have our very first page in our funnel. So we need to create page number two. So let's go to our list and we need to create the email confirmation page. So let's go ahead and copy. We'll click create page, go to the very top. Let's do control V to paste, control V to paste in the title. We can also do that for the description. We don't wanna add an integration key or a tag reference. No page scripts for now. We can also select a template for this page. So we can choose blank template. We can choose any of the pages that we have created, or we can choose a page template that Builderall has in the gallery. Let's go ahead and just keep this a blank template. Again, we have the SEO settings, so we don't wanna add any keywords, meta tags. We're not worried about redirecting the page for now. We'll go ahead and let the search engines index the page, so we'll keep that unchecked. And we won't add a share image for now. We'll just go ahead and click save. Now let's go ahead and add our next page. So we'll click create new page, go back up to general settings. And for this page, we want to create the front end sales page. So let's go ahead and we'll call this page front end sales page. We'll change the title, add that to the description. We won't worry about the integration key, tag references or page scripts. Again, we're just gonna use a blank template and we could add keywords, meta tags, or redirect here. We're just going to go ahead and create this blank page. We're not going to worry about this now. We're going to go ahead and let the search engines index our page. We're not going to worry about share images right now. We're just going to click save. 
Now we need to go through and do the same exact thing for the rest of these funnels here. I'm gonna go ahead and create them for you and speed up the video so we can move on to the next phase. So now that we have our pages created, let's go ahead and start editing our first page. So the first thing we need to do is click edit page. And like every website, we need to add a panel. So we'll go ahead and add a blank panel. And the first thing that I like to do to stay organized is to add a panel and text to every website. That way, when I actually enter the page to start editing and designing, I always have a very bold reminder of what page I'm working on. Believe it or not, that can actually get confusing. So let me go ahead. I'm going to just copy from our list here, registration page, and I'll go ahead and just move that over and we can double click in the box and highlight and paste. So now we have the title of our first page. Let's go ahead and save. And that's fine. And let's go to the next page. So the first thing we need to do, add a panel. We'll add a blank panel to start. And since this is our email confirmation page, we'll go ahead and get our list out here. Highlight email confirmation. We'll go ahead, move that over. Double click in the box. Highlight and control V to paste. Let's go ahead and save. And we'll choose our next page from the drop down menu here. So this will be our front end sales page. Let's go ahead and select that. And we will add a panel. And let's go ahead and select our text here, front and sales page. And we will copy and double click in the box and control V to paste. So let's go ahead and save. And that's fine. So now that you've seen three pages created, let me go ahead and just speed through the process so we can move on to the next step. So now that we have an overview of the Cheetah Builder and our pages created, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to connect it to the email autoresponder so we can start collecting leads as soon as our funnel is published. So until then, go build it with BuilderAll! Hey y'all, Bridget Bartlett here. I'm the local business marketing training and support specialist with BuilderAll. In the last video, I created the pages we're going to need in our upsell and downsell sales funnel. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps of creating an email list and connecting it to our funnel. To get started, we need to first get access to our email autoresponder mailing boss. We can do that by simply clicking here to enter the app. Once inside, the first thing we need to do is create a new workflow. So we can do that here. So let's call our new workflow sales funnel, and we'll go ahead and click continue. Let's go ahead and save our new workflow. And the first thing we want to do, click here on list and go ahead and drag it to our workflow canvas. To create our list, we can click here to edit. And we could choose from another list that we have in our email autoresponder, or we can click here to create a new list. So let's go ahead and create a new list now. Let's give our new list a name. We'll just call it upsell downsell funnel. And we'll copy this and we'll add this in the display and the details. Here we can choose a single or a double opt-in. A single opt-in is when they enter their email address and they immediately go to the offer. A double opt-in is when they enter their email address, they go to an email confirmation page that gives them instructions to go check their email and click on the link in the email to confirm that their email is valid. This is very, very important. To have a high quality list, you need to choose a double opt-in. I know that a lot of people will say single opt-in is better, but if someone enters a fake email address into your field, then it goes to your list. And if your email autoresponder keeps getting fake emails and sending them, it damages the reputation of your email address. So it's very, very important to always choose a double opt-in. So let's go ahead and we'll keep this double opt-in and we'll click create. 
So now that we've created our list, let's go ahead and edit our list by clicking Update List. Now you'll see we have the name and display name and description just like we entered already. If you click Advanced here, you can choose again, double opt-in, so we have these options here. You can choose to send a welcome email, but I actually prefer to leave this as no because the first email in our sequence is going to be our welcome email. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave this no. You can add a link to redirect if the subscriber is not found or if they already exist, but there's a better way of doing that and we'll go into that later on in the video. If you want to require approval of your subscriber, you could choose yes here, but I just prefer to leave this as no. You can change the display name that you want your email email to be from. You can choose from your list of verified emails here, but if you don't have a verified email, you can go ahead and choose the mailing boss email that it defaults to. You can select which email you want it to reply to. I did a training earlier on a hair salon. That's why it defaulted to my reply to email. You can change the subject of your emails. You can create tags with list field values here, and that's a more advanced feature we'll go into later in the course. And then you can also send data to the CRM, which I definitely recommend because Builderall has a CRM integrated simply by clicking yes. So let's go ahead and save here. You also have the option to receive notifications. So if you want to receive a notification every time someone subscribes, you can click yes here and then enter the email that you want the notification sent to. You can do the same when they unsubscribe or when they confirm your email. Under subscriber actions, when they subscribe, if you want them to unsubscribe from any other list, you could choose that here. Or when they unsubscribe, if you want them to unsubscribe from any of these other lists, you could choose that here. Your company details are going to be the default details that are up in your profile here. So if you are an agency and you have multiple companies that you're doing email marketing for, you could change the company details specifically here in this email list. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and keep this as the default and let's go up here to subscribers. Here you'll have a list of all of the subscribers that you have in your list. Here you will have the segments of your list that you have created. And here you can select the fields that you want in your email marketing form. So we need to have a name because right now the default is simply the email. So we want to add the name so we can do that here by clicking add text field and let's go ahead and just keep it first name. And then we will change the tag to F name F name in capital letters is the tag for first name. We do want to make this required. So we'll go ahead and click yes. And we want it to be visible in the form. So we'll keep that as yes or visible. And then let's go ahead and make this the first field in the form. So it'll be first name first and then the field for the email. So let's go ahead and change this to two. And then we can save our changes. You can also add a date and time field, a phone prefix dropdown if you are wanting to capture the phone number. You can also add a dropdown field, a text area field, a phone number field, a multi-select field, checkbox field, a date field, and a radio field. For now, we're just going to keep this as the field that we need for the first name and email. And let's go ahead and move to pages. Now here in the pages, there are a couple things that we need to change to make sure that it's connected to our funnel. Right now, we have some default pages and emails that will go out if we get a new subscriber. But we want to customize this because we want to keep our brand and the whole process congruent, okay? So the first thing we want to do is change the subscription confirmed page to be the, our front end sales page. So let's go back to our sales funnel. We're gonna enter the Cheetah Builder. Let's find our sales funnel and let's go ahead and edit and let's publish this so that we can get a published link to attach to our form. So we'll click close now and we need the front end sales page link. So the URL to this specific page. So let's go ahead and go to website page and now we have our front end sales page URL. So let's go back to our mailing boss and click on subscription confirmed. Currently, this would be the page that they go to when they confirm their email, but you can see this is definitely not attractive and not congruent with our brand. In addition, this does not give them the offer that we're giving in our lead magnet. So what we wanna do is click down here where it says advanced, and you can see it says, instead of the above message, redirect the subscriber to the following URL. So let's go ahead and paste 
the URL to our front end sales page here and we'll just click save and next. Let's go back to pages. Now here it says update profile. Right now, if they have already confirmed their email, but they want to go back to that front end sales page, right now it would go to update your profile page, which is this ugly page here. So what we wanna do is actually change this to go to our front end sales page again, because we wanna give them the opportunity to still go to our front end offer, even if they've already subscribed. So let's just go ahead and we'll click Control V to paste and then save next. Now they will be redirected to our front end sales page instead of this page here. So let's go back to our pages section and we want to change the subscription confirmed email. So let's go ahead and click here. And you can see right now it says, please click here in order to confirm your subscription on the list. And then it gives the list name, but our list name is upsell, downsell, funnel. So let's go ahead and change this by double clicking in the box. And let's just completely delete this here. And we'll say, please click here to receive your special offer. Now you never want to change this because this is the auto tag that's going to send them to the subscribe URL. So this is what's going to tell mailing boss that they have subscribed. You can add anything you want to in the thank you. So if you wanted to add your name, you could do that here. You can also do a lot of other customizations here if you prefer. And then the company name field, this is the auto tag for the company name that we discussed already how to change. And any of that information, whatever the company name is in that section is going to show up here in this auto tag. So let's go ahead and click save next. So now that we have our email list created and connected to our sales funnel, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create and connect the membership areas so we can make sure to restrict access to our upsell and downsell sell items. Until then, go build it with Builderall. Hey y'all, Bridget Bartlett here. I'm a local business marketing training and support specialist with Builderall. Welcome to step four of our funnel challenge. So far, we've created our blueprint, pages, and email list. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create our membership areas to restrict access to our upsell and downsell products. To do that, we need to access our sales funnel inside the Cheetah Builder. We can do that by clicking Enter inside the Builderall dashboard. And we need to select our sales funnel. So let's go ahead and click Edit Site. And the first thing we want to do is create members area. So we'll click here. And we need to give our members area a name. So we'll call this lead magnet member. And then I always put lock to remind me that this is the lock for this page. Okay. So now we need to select the color of our lock. So we can do that by clicking here and we'll just choose a color. So let's just go ahead and choose red. We can also just add this as the description. And now we need to choose how do we want to release this page, okay? So we have two options. We can automatically grant access to the members area or we can release the page manually or upon payment. So since this is our lead magnet that we're giving away for free, we can just automatically grant access to that membership page. Now we can allow them to enter a token, log in, or we can choose both. It's easier and best practice to choose log in, but we can talk about tokens and using both at another time. Now we need to select the page that we want to give access to. So since this is our lead magnet, we wanna go ahead and select our lead magnet membership page. And this is why organizing your pages the way that we did is so important. Now we need to select the main page of our members area. Now this page in our funnel is going to be the thank you page because the thank you page has access to all the members areas, okay? So let's go ahead and choose thank you. And now we need to select the list inside Mailing Boss that we created to put all of our leads. So let's go ahead and choose our list, which we called upsell, downsell funnel, and we can click save. But I do want to point out to you, if we did have an e-learning that we wanted to use to give access to, it would show up here and then we could select it here. So let's go ahead and click save since we don't have an e-learning. And now we've created our first membership area. Okay. Now remember we have four of them. So we have three more that we need to create. So let's go back up to create members area and create our second membership area. And this one is actually going to be the front end member area, okay? So let's give this a title. And again, we're gonna call it lock because we are locking down that page. So let's choose a different color for our member area. And this one we'll just choose blue. 
and we can add the description here, which will be just the same. And now we need to decide how we want to give them access to the page. We don't want to automatically grant access because this is the first item that we are asking them to purchase. So we don't want to release it until they have actually purchased it. So we can click here for release upon payment. And again, we can choose to give them access with a token, a login, or both. Let's just go ahead and ask them to log in. And we need to choose the front end membership area page. So we'll go ahead and select that. And again, we wanna select the main page, which has all of the access to our membership areas. So we'll choose the thank you page. And we don't need to add it to a mailing boss list because we've already added them. So once they register the first time in our list, we don't need to add them again. So we'll just go ahead and leave that as is, and then we'll click save. Now we have our second members area. Okay. So let's go ahead and we'll create another membership area. And this one is going to be the upsell member area. So we'll go ahead and add that to our title. Again, we want to remind ourselves that it is a lock for this page. Let's choose a different color here. So we'll just choose green. And again, this is a product that we want them to purchase. Actually, let's go ahead and enter the description there. We want them to purchase this product. So we want to release it upon payment. So we'll go ahead and select the manual payment option and we want them to log in to get access. So we'll go ahead and select that as well. And we need to select the upsell member area page. Okay. So to do that, we need to choose upsell membership page. And again, we want to choose the thank you page so they get access to all of the members areas. We don't need to add them to a mailing boss list because we already did. And we'll click save. And you see, we have our third membership area here. We got one more. So let's go ahead and create that. And this one is going to be the downsell member area. Okay. So we'll go ahead and I will paste that in here from our list. We'll go ahead and paste that in the description. Let's choose a different lock for this page and we'll go ahead and choose purple for this one. And again, this is something we want them to purchase to get access to. So we'll go ahead and select manual payment and we will ask them to log in rather than a token or both. So we'll just go ahead and select login. And now we need to choose the downsell member area page. So that's this one here. And we want to select our thank you page. So we'll choose that here. We don't want to add them again to any lists and mailing boss. So we'll go ahead and click save. So now that we've created all of our membership areas and you can see them and access them here, if you need to edit them at any time, you can simply click here to edit. But there's one more thing that we need to address, okay? So let's go over here to site members because this is the area that has all the information for your membership areas, okay? So we need to go to automatic emails and you'll see that we don't have any themes created. So we need to create a theme for our emails that they're going to receive regarding our membership area. So let's just call this upsell theme and we'll click save. So now we need to edit the theme. So we'll simply click here to expand our options and you'll see this is what the email is going to look like when they receive it. Okay. When they've just registered into the membership area, they're going to receive this email and we want to customize this to be congruent with our brand. And we have lots of options here. So if we wanted to change this builder all and we wanted to say upsell, we could do that here. And of course you can make it bold. You can change the colors. You can do lots of things here. Um, we have these auto tags here. So this is going to capture the username. This is really important. You can add any information here that you need them to have. You can also change this to be your name here. And then you can put your business information here. If you want to add any of these tags to your email, you could do that as well. So lots and lots of options. And I definitely recommend customizing this to be congruent because once they register, you want them to feel like they have not registered into something. They're going to get a bunch of spam. They are still with you. They are still with your brand. So once we have customized this and designed this how we want it to, we can simply click save. But there's one more thing that we need to do to connect these emails to our membership area. So let's go to site settings and you'll see here automatic email members theme. Now you see right now this is empty because we did not have a theme created. So let's go ahead and select the theme that we just created and we want to save that.
And anytime that you make any adjustments or edits to the global elements, you always want to republish your website. So in this video, I showed you how to create and connect your membership areas to restrict access to our upsell and downsell products. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create those products in the super checkout system and set them up to release automatically upon purchase. So until then, go build it with Builderall. Hey all, Bridget Bartlett here. I am the local business marketing training and support specialist with Builderall. Welcome to step five of the funnel challenge. So far, we've created the blueprint, pages, email list, and membership areas for our funnel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create our front end offer, upsell, and downsell products inside the super checkout. To access this, we're going to edit our funnel inside the Cheetah Builder. So let's go ahead and enter that now. And here's the funnel we were working on. So let's go ahead and click edit site. And to access the super checkout, you can see that here on the left hand side where the global elements are. So let's go ahead and click on super checkout. And on the left hand side here, you see the very first step is to enter our business information. Now to save time, I've already entered this in here, but you will have to do this to move to the next step. At the bottom here, you have the option for global affiliations. So inside the super checkout, you can create affiliate products. And if you want to enable the option to approve of an affiliate to promote one product, and then at the same time, approve them to promote all of your products, you can toggle this switch on here to enable that. But we're not gonna talk about creating affiliate products in this course. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disable that. That's an entire training all on its own. So we'll go ahead and click save to create our products. So let's go ahead and click create product. Now the first product that we want to create is going to be our front end product. So let's go ahead and choose an image. And we can just expand this just to get the whole picture there and we'll click OK. You can choose the language you want your product to be in. Since I'm in the United States, I'll just go ahead and select English. You can click here to always ask for the address in case there's something that you want to send them. If we're choosing a digital product, we don't necessarily need to ask for the address. But if there is a chance that you want to send them a thumb drive or something like that, you can select this option here to always ask for the address in the checkout process. For this purpose, we'll go ahead and just keep the box unchecked. Here, you can write a product description. So let's go ahead and type in, and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this lots of times so we can see what it looks like with a lot of text when we have the final product. So now that we have entered the information, we can select whether we want a digital product or a physical product. In this option, we're gonna keep it as digital, you can also choose ebooks, courses or subscriptions, services, con consulting, all of these options here. Again, for this purpose, we'll keep it simple and just choose ebooks or media files, and we'll go ahead and click next. Here you can select your payment gateway. I already have Stripe enabled, but if you want to enable any other option, you have all of these possibilities. And to integrate them, you simply follow the directions here, which are really, really simple and straightforward, and then you click OK. Since I already have this enabled, I'll go ahead and X out of this and I'll just click here because that's the integration that I want to use. Here you can choose the currency that you want to work with. Again, I'm in the United States, so I'll just choose the United States dollar. Here you can select any refund period. So you want no refunds or 14 days. We'll go ahead and keep this as 14 days. And to make a payment, we can choose from a single one-time payment. We can choose reoccurring payments like for a subscription, or we can actually choose an auction. For this purpose, we'll just go ahead and click single payment. And then if we want to select any additional taxes, we can enter that here. If we have any coupons that we have created, which you can do here on the left-hand side, you can select from the drop-down menu of the coupons that you've created. And now we need to give our product a price. So let's go ahead and we'll just call this 50 cents because we're just gonna test this out. If you're in the European nations or advertising to the European nations, you can click here to ask the customer to abdicate his refund, to grant instant access. You can also enable the VAT here if you want to include and edit this. However, again, since I'm in the United States and I don't plan on advertising to the European nations, I'm just going to leave these boxes unchecked. We'll go ahead and click next. And like we discussed before, we can create an affiliate program for this product, but we're going to discuss that in a different training. So we'll go ahead and just click next here. 
Now we need to choose the sales page design. So we have four options here. If you look at the two-step checkout, those actually involve an iframe and it's a little bit more advanced. But the three-step checkout is simply just a link with a button, okay? So for the purpose of this training, we're just gonna use the three-step checkout. So you can select that here. You can also edit the checkout by clicking here. You can change the font and the colors. You can change the field style. You can also change the colors of the buttons. We're just gonna go ahead and leave them as the default and we'll go ahead and click save. If you wanna preview it, you can do that here. So this is what our checkout is going to look like. You can also enable a custom footer on your checkout. You could do that here. If you want to use a custom URL, you could click here and then paste the URL here. However, remember, this is our front end product, okay? So we want to actually send them to the upsell page once they have received the front end offer, okay? Because that's our lead magnet. So let's go ahead and choose the upsell page as our thank you page. And now we need to choose the page that our product is going to be sold on. Since this is the front end product, we want this sold on the front end sales page. So now that we've chosen our front end sales page, we can just go ahead and click next. And here we can actually choose to add them to a list inside Mailing Boss once they register. But remember, we already did that. We already set up our email list and they're already gonna be registered as soon as they enter their email on the opt-in page. So we don't need to do that again here. But if you did want to, you could add them to a list here. We can choose a default thank you email message or we can create our own. I like the default, so let's just go ahead and keep that box checked. We can send them an abandoned cart email. So if you click here, you you can send them an email an hour or you can change this to two hours or whatever increment you want to send it in and it will remind them that they had a product in the cart if they want to purchase again we'll just go ahead and leave that checked. and you can also use the default abandoned cart email message or you can uncheck that and create your own again i like the default so we'll just go ahead and keep that checked and click next now, since this is the front end product that we are creating right now, we want to release the front end member area lock because this is the front end product, okay? So we'll go ahead and select that. So after they have purchased our front end product, this is going to release the front end member area lock. So let's go ahead and click next. And we don't need to enable any scripts in our product pages or scripts in completed purchases, so we'll keep those unchecked. We don't need to add any webhooks here, so we'll leave that unchecked as well. We have no e-learnings and no new e-learning. So we'll go ahead and click next. Once you've read through all the terms and conditions, go ahead and click accept the terms and create the product. So now we have our first product created. You'll notice if you click links here, so we have actually have the link to the sales page, the link to the thank you page or the upsell page, which is the same thing for this product. We also have the checkout URL that you can add to a button or you can do the one click upsell. It's important to know that you have those options, but I'm gonna show you a different, easier way that we can add those to our pages. But first let's continue creating the other two products. So we'll click here to create product again. And this product is going to be the upsell product. And let's go ahead and add an image. And we'll stretch this out just a little bit and click OK. And we want to keep the language as English. We don't need to ask for the address, so we'll go ahead and keep that unchecked. Let's go ahead and add some description here. And we can choose between a digital and a physical product. We'll go ahead and choose digital. And we can choose any of these categories for this upsell offer. We'll go ahead and keep this as ebook or media files. And we'll click next to continue. We're gonna go ahead and use the Stripe gateway. But again, you could choose any of these options here and then simply check the box that you want to use. Since we're in the United States, we'll go ahead and choose the US dollar. And we'll create a 14 day refund period. We want this to be a single payment, so we'll go ahead and keep this as single payment. And we don't need to add any additional taxes here, so we'll just leave this as zero. And we don't have any coupons to add, so we'll just go ahead and leave that as is. We'll create a 50 cent price on this product. We don't need to worry about the European nations or the VAT, so we'll go ahead and click next. And we're not gonna create an affiliate offer for this product, so we'll go ahead and click next here. We wanna use the same design we used in the previous offer, so we'll use the three-step checkout. And we don't need to enable a custom footer for this one, and we 
don't want to create a custom thank you URL because we want them to go to our own thank you page. So let's go ahead and select the thank you member access page. If they purchase the upsell product, we want to send them to the thank you page. So what page do we want to sell this product on? We want to sell the product on the upsell page. So we'll go ahead and click upsell page and then click next. They already are in our email list, so we don't need to select that here. We'll go ahead and use the default thank you email message. And let's go ahead and just send the abandoned cart email message. So we'll check this box here. We'll send it an hour after they have abandoned the cart. And we'll go ahead and use the default abandoned cart email as well. So let's click next. And for this one, when they have purchased our upsell product, we want to release the upsell membership area. Okay, so let's go ahead and select that and click next. And we have no external scripts, webhooks, or e-learnings to release, so we'll go ahead and click next here as well. Once you've read thoroughly through the terms and conditions, you can accept and then create product. Now we have one more product that we need to create, and that is our downsell product. So let's go ahead and create product again. And we're going to call this downsell product and we will add an image and we want to choose English as the language we don't need to ask for an address we can enter a product description here and we can choose a physical or digital product we'll go ahead and just keep this as digital and we'll choose a category we can keep this as ebooks or media files here so we'll go ahead and click next Again, we can choose any of these payment gateways, but since I have Stripe enabled, we'll just go ahead and select Stripe. We can choose our currency, so we'll keep this as the US dollar, and we will choose 14 days for our refund period. And we will make this a single payment, and we will add the value as 50 cents like the other offers. And we are not in the European nations, and we don't, so we don't need to enable the VAT as well, so we'll go ahead and click Next. And we're not creating an affiliate program for this product, so we'll go ahead and click Next. And we'll use the same three-step checkout because that's the most simple. And we do not need to enable a custom footer or a custom thank you URL because this is the downsell product. So our thank you page for the downsell product needs to be the thank you member access page. So we'll go ahead and choose that because that's the page that they're going to go to if they purchase the downsell. But even if they decide to not purchase the downsell, we're still going to send them to the thank you page. Where do we want to sell this product? We want to sell the product on the downsell page, right? So we'll go ahead and click that and then click next. Since they're already on our mailing boss list, we don't need to add that here, so we'll just leave that as is. We'll go ahead and choose the default thank you message, and we're not going to choose an abandoned cart message on this one, so we'll go ahead and click next. Now, if they've purchased the downsell product, we want to send them to the downsell member area that is locked, okay? So let's go ahead and we'll select that and click next. We don't need to enable any scripts, webhooks, or e-learning, so we'll go ahead and click next here. Again, once you've read through all the terms and conditions, you can check this box here and click create product. So now that we've created our products for our funnel using the super checkout, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to connect everything to our funnel so that it functions properly. And we're going to test it out with a live purchase. So until then, go build it with Builderall. Hey all, Bridget Bartlett here. I am the local business marketing training and support specialist with Builderall. Welcome to step six of the funnel challenge. Up to this point, we've created our blueprint, pages, email list, membership areas, and products in our super checkout. In this video, we're going to connect it all together and do a live test purchase. To get started, we need to access our funnel inside the Cheetah Builder. Once inside the Builderall dashboard, we can simply click Enter in the Cheetah app. And once we find the funnel that we're working on, we can go ahead and click Edit Site. So we're going to go through this funnel page by page and make sure that we have all of the elements that we need to include to make this a connected, functioning upsell and downsell funnel. So to do that, let's start with the lead magnet page. So we can click here to enter. And on this page, they're going to register inside our funnel and also inside our email list that we created and also inside our membership area. They're going to do all of that with just one button. So let's go ahead and add the button by going to Element and down to Buttons. 
and let's just add this button here. So now we need to add a form that they can register on with their email and name. So let's click in the button and go to actions here and we can go down to site members. We want them to register here so we're going to leave this on register. We also want to give them access to the lead magnet membership page so we're going to click here for that. And we also want to redirect them to the email confirmation page because when they register inside our funnel, we want them to go to the email confirmation page and then they will check their email and click on the link to confirm their email address. This is called a double opt-in, which is the absolute best way to get a high quality email list. So let's go ahead and click select. And let's change the title of our button by clicking here to edit element. We could go down to headline and we can say, Register for your download now. We'll go ahead and expand this button a little bit. And let's go ahead and save. So now we need to go to the next page in our funnel, which is going to be the email confirmation page. So we can select that here. We'll click save and exit. Now here, we need to give them information about what to do once they reach this page. So what we want them to do is see this page and then go to their email address to click confirm. So let's go ahead and add some text. Go to elements, add text. We can double click in the box and let's go ahead and add our text. And we can go ahead and stretch this out just a little bit and we'll go ahead and center that. And let's go ahead and click Save. Okay, so let's move on to the front end sales page. So go ahead and click Save and Exit. So the front end sales page is going to be the first offer that we are going to ask them to purchase. So let's go ahead and we need to add a button. We'll go to Elements and Buttons. And we'll go ahead and just choose this first one. And let's go ahead and change the headline. So we will call this buy now. And we can change the action to the super checkout. And then we want to choose our front end product because this is going to link this button to our super checkout where we created the front end product. Okay, so let's go ahead and click select and let's save. And let's go to the next page, which is our upsell page. So we'll go ahead and click Save and Next. And we need to add a button because this is going to be the first page that they have a choice, okay? So they're either going to purchase the upsell item or they're gonna say no thank you and go to the downsell page. So let's go ahead and add a button. And we're gonna change the name of this button to be Buy Now. And let's go ahead and set the action to be our upsell item. So we can do that here and click select. So now this button is connected to our upsell item, but we need to have a way for them to say no thank you. So there are several ways you can do that. You can, just like a Word document, you can add text down here that says no thank you. When they click that, it goes to the downsell page. But I actually just like to add another button but this is going to be a special no thank you button, okay? So let's go ahead and we'll change the headline to be no thank you, but we don't want this button to stand out as much as our buy now button is. So what I like to do is make the font just a little bit smaller and let's go ahead and make the box transparent. Make the color of the text, we'll just change that to black and then we want to go to general colors and we will just move this bar here, the opacity bar, to be clear. So now you see it's still a button, but it's not as dominant as this button, okay? It just looks like some text that says no thank you. So what we need to do now that we have our no thank you button is we want to set the action to be the down sell page. So let's go ahead and select page and then we will connect it to the down sell page. So let's go ahead and click select. And then we want to save. Now I also want to show you another tip. If we want to use this no thank you button on all of our websites, we don't want to have to change the opacity and the text size and everything every single time. What we can actually do is click here to save this element and we'll just say no thank you button. And this will be saved in our personal elements so that we can retrieve the button later on. So I'll show you later how you can retrieve that. So let's go ahead and click save. And that's fine.
and close. And let's go to the next page, which is the down sell page. So we'll save and exit. So let's go ahead and add a buy now button for the down sell product. So we'll go to elements and button, and we'll go ahead and add our buy now button. Let's change the name and the headline. So we'll just say buy now. And let's go ahead and set the action to be our buy now down sell product. So we'll do that in the super checkout and we'll choose the down sell product. So let's go ahead and save. Now, if they purchase the down sell product, they're gonna to go to the thank you page as we saw in our diagram. But what if they decide to say no thank you to the down sell product? We need to add our personal element that we just created. So we'll go to personal and elements and we'll choose buttons. And you see here, we have the no thank you button. So let's just go ahead and drag that in here. Now we already have our no thank you button, but we need to change the action to our no thank you button on this page. So let's go ahead and click on set link. And then instead of the down sell page on this button, we wanna send them to the thank you member access. So let's go ahead and select the thank you member access page, and then we'll click select. And let's go ahead and save. Now the next page that we wanna to go to is the thank you member access page. So let's go ahead and select that now, click save and exit. Now this is the page that's going to be the final page in our funnel. So we wanna have all four products on this page that they can access, even the ones that they have not purchased, okay? So we need to add four buttons here. So let's go ahead and we will expand this panel by dragging the blue line there. And let's go ahead and add four buttons. So we'll go to elements, and buttons and let's go ahead and add one button and two buttons and three buttons and our fourth button here's a little tip as well you can click shift and then left click in the box and you see we have some options to align vertically or horizontally if you select all of the buttons here and then click here to align vertically, you see they all line up perfectly in a vertical direction. So let's go ahead and title our buttons so that we keep them straight. We'll go to headline, and the first button is going to be for the lead magnet. The next button is going to be for the front end product. The next button is going to be for our upsell product. And then the last button is going to be for our downsell product. Now we need to connect each button to the membership area for these products because we do not want them to be able to access the products unless they have purchased them. So they are restricted by the membership area, okay? So let's go ahead and set the link here. And we want to connect this to the lead magnet membership area page. So we'll do that here. And you want to make sure that they open in a new tab so that they can always close the tab and go back to the thank you page. So we'll go ahead and click select. And we'll do the same thing for the front end product. We'll just click into the box, go to set link, and then go to page. And then we want the front end membership page. Open in a new tab and click select. We'll do the same thing for the upsell. We'll set the link, go to page, we'll go to upsell membership page and select. And we'll go to the downsell page, set the link, page, downsell membership page. It's open in a new tab, so we'll click select. Now, of course, most important, we wanna save. So now that we have the buttons added to our page, let's go ahead and set up our membership areas so that we can deliver the products that we are promising, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is go to the lead magnet membership page. So we'll select that and click save and exit. So these pages are where we are actually delivering the product, okay? So let's go ahead and we're going to add a button. Now, usually a lead magnet is just something free that you're giving away and it is something like an ebook. So let's go ahead and we'll change the heading here of our button and we'll say download now and let's set the action over here. You see download and this will allow you to select a file that you want them to download. So whether it's an ebook or a coupon, you can 
upload the file by simply selecting it here and then choosing it and then clicking save and then that file will be automatically downloaded when they click that button. We're not going to select a file right now, but we're just going to move forward as if we did and this is going to be the ebook that they're going to download on the lead magnet membership page. This is the free product that we are offering them to opt into our funnel. So let's go ahead and save here and that's fine. And let's go to the next page, which is the front end membership page. So save and exit. And this is going to be the first page where they have to purchase something to get access to it. Okay. So instead of adding a button, because there's lots of varieties, we can have them download. We can just have them reach this page as part of a video course. We could have our scheduler here so that they have to purchase a private consultation with us to be able to make an appointment. There's lots of possibilities here. And to make sure that I'm creating this upsell downsell funnel in a universal way. I want you to be able to use this for your business no matter what the model is. So to keep this funnel in a universal way, I just want to add text to help you remember what you need to put on this page when creating your own funnel. So let's go ahead and we'll just choose some text here and I'm just going to left click in the box to edit and then I'm actually going to click control V and we're just going to say congratulations here is your front end product. So whatever product they purchase they need to be able to access on this page here. So we'll go ahead and just stretch this out and then let's go ahead and save. And let's go to the next page, which is the upsell membership page. So we'll click save and exit. And let's go ahead and add some text. So we'll go ahead and go to elements and text. And we'll go ahead and add some text here again, just to let you know what needs to be on this page. So whatever product they are purchasing as their upsell item, they need to be able to get that product on this page. So let's double click in the box to edit the text. I'll just click control V to paste here. Go ahead and click save and close. And we have one page left. This is going to be our downsell membership page. So on this page, they need to be able to access the downsell product that they have purchased. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the same thing we did to the two previous pages. We just want to add some text, drag that over here. We're going to double click in the box and let's go ahead and paste some text here. So now you know when you're creating these membership area pages, you know that here, when you get to this page, is where you need to deliver your downsell product, okay? And these are going to be locked depending on the purchase through Super Checkout for the downsell product, then they will go to this page here. It will be released through the membership areas. So you can see why having all of these tools integrated seamlessly with each other makes your life so much easier and creating these professional funnels in a simple way. So let's go ahead and we'll click save. And that's fine. So now that we've added all the pieces of our funnel, let's go ahead and go through the diagram and talk about what we have done so far. Okay. So we have created our lead magnet page with the form on it where they register into our email list, our membership areas, and they go to the confirmation email where it tells them go check your email and confirm into the list. Okay. So once they have done that, they immediately go to the front end offer, which is the first offer that we are selling them. So when they get to the front end offer, they either purchase or they get out. Okay. So if they purchase, they go through the checkout and they get access to the upsell page. That's going to be the page that we sell them our upsell item. This is also going to be the first page that they get a choice. Okay. Because they can either purchase the upsell item, go through the checkout and then go to the thank you page, or they can say no thank you to the upsell item. And then they will go to the downsell page where they will be given the choice to either purchase the downsell item and then go to through the checkout to the thank you page, or they can say no thank you and then still go to the thank you page. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a live test now and test out our funnel and make sure that everything is functioning properly as we intended. Okay. So let's go back to our home and save and exit. And anytime you make any major changes to any of your global elements, you always want to republish or publish if you have not yet. So now that we've republished, let's go ahead and go to our first page to register for our sales funnel. So to do that, let's go to the website page here. And we have our browser notifications on. I'm just going to X out of that. So we want to register for our download now. 
So let's go ahead and register. And you see our registration form for our membership area pops up. So let's go ahead and register here. And we'll create a password and we'll just say team123456 and team123456 and confirm our registration. Now you see that we go to the email confirmation page. So now we need to confirm our registration in our email. So let's go to the emails. Okay, so now you see we have two emails. So we have the membership area email where it tells us, you know, welcome to our membership area. And it has our email address that we registered with and our password. And we also have the email here to confirm our subscription into the list okay so let's go ahead and click here so now we've gone to our front end sales page okay so here we have the option to either buy the front end offer or get out so let's go ahead and purchase the front end sales offer so you see it goes to our front end offer you see we have a lot of text here to show you what that will look like we have our custom message thank you for shopping with us so let's go ahead and click continue to purchase the item and we want to fill in our information here And we want to put in our password. And I'll go ahead and add my credit card number. And we'll go ahead and save our credit card information for future payments. So let's go ahead and click pay now. Great, so now we've purchased our front end product. So let's go ahead and click continue. And now you see we've gone to our upsell page. So we can either purchase our upsell page or you see we can click no thank you. So let's say the upsell page is not really for us. So let's go ahead and click no thank you. And now you see we've gone to the downsell page. So we can purchase the downsell page and we should go to the thank you page or we can say no thank you and we will still go to the thank you page. Let's go ahead and purchase the downsell item. So we'll click buy now. And you see here's our downsell offer. Let's go ahead and click continue to purchase. And I'll enter my password here. Now you can see, since I chose to save my payment method, I don't need to enter that again, but here I can also choose to use another card. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the same card. So we'll click pay here. And we have successfully purchased our downsell product. So let's go ahead and click continue. And now you see we have access to our thank you membership page with all of our products. So let's go ahead and make sure that we actually have the access. So remember our lead magnet, we should have access to because that was the free item that was automatically released. So let's go ahead and click here. And you see we have access to the lead magnet here where we can download our product. Let's go back to the thank you page and make sure that we still have access to the front end product because we purchased that item. So let's go ahead and click here. And you see, congratulations, here's your front end product. Let's go back to the thank you page. And remember, we did not purchase the upsell product. So let's click here. And you see, we do not have access to this product because we did not purchase it. But we did purchase the downsell product. So let's go ahead and click here to make sure. And there we go, congratulations, here's your downsell product. So now that we have the frame created for our universal upsell and downsell funnel, you can use this same structure to create your own funnel for your business. However, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to customize this funnel for a coaching business where our lead magnet is an ebook, our front end offer is going to be a course, our upsell item is a private coaching session, and the downsell item is going to be a group coaching session. To do this, we're gonna use the booking app included with our tools. Your lead will need to purchase these sessions to gain access to your scheduler that will be protected by the membership areas. This way you can be sure all scheduled clients have already gone through the checkout process. So until then, go build it with Builderall. Hey all, Bridget Bartlett here. I am a local business marketing training and support specialist with Builderall. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the Builderall booking app with our upsell and downsell funnel to ensure you stay booked with paid clients. To do this, we need to create two different calendars inside our booking app, one for private coaching and one for group coaching. We're going to offer these services on our upsell and downsell pages of our funnel. 
we're going to give access to the scheduler after they've purchased through the super checkout. So we'll be adding each schedule to the restricted membership pages. So for the private coaching, we'll be selling that on the upsell page. Once they've purchased through the super checkout, we're going to deliver that on the upsell membership page. Okay. So on the downsell page, we're going to sell the group coaching, and then we're going to deliver access to their scheduler on the downsell member area. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is access our Builderall booking app, which is in the Builderall dashboard. So let's go ahead and click enter. And here you'll see the booking app dashboard. This is where you can track the progress of your calendars, your income, and a summary of the future events. You can click here on the left hand side and this will show all of your calendars. Since this is my training account, we have not created any calendars yet. You can access your schedule for all of your appointments here on this page. You can organize by status, by calendar, and by host. You can also look at a calendar view here. You can also add hosts or delete hosts from the host section here. So let's go ahead and go back to the dashboard and let's create our first calendar. So we have three options for the style of calendar that we're going to use. We have consultation, event, and classroom. So some examples of a consultation calendar you would want to use for maybe a hairstylist, a consultation like a dentist, psychologist, private class, individual mentoring. This is what we're going to use for our private coaching sessions. But we also have the option to create events such as webinars, live releases, or live events. And then for the classroom, this is what we're going to use for our group coaching sessions. So some examples for a classroom would be the classroom, such as schools, gyms, reoccurring group activities, or courses and trainings. So let's start with the consultation style and create our private coaching calendar. So we'll just choose that there and click create new calendar. Now we already have the title of our calendar here. We could add a description if we wanted to. We could also upload a logo. Let's just go ahead and upload the Builderall logo. And you can change the background color if you wish. We'll just go ahead and leave that white. You can also let the users select their time zone, or you can select a predefined time zone. Since I want the display to be whatever is in the user's time zone, I want to go ahead and keep this selected. After they have subscribed, we can actually send them a display success message like, thanks for signing up. But since we're putting this in a sales funnel, we want to send them to our thank you page. Okay, so let's go ahead and select here and then let's get access to the link from our thank you page inside our sales funnel. So to do that, we need to go back to the Builderall back office. We need to enter the Cheetah app and we need to edit the funnel and then get the link for the thank you member access. Now, just to make this clear, what we want to do is we want to send them after they have scheduled, we wanna send them to the thank you page where we have access to all of the products. So it will be the front end offer, the lead magnet, the upsell and the downsell, but they will not be able to access it unless they've purchased it, okay? And then the same thing for the group coaching session, we still wanna send them back to the thank you page. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that link. We can do that by clicking the three dots here and then we'll go to website and then let's go ahead and copy this link. We'll take this back to our scheduler and then we'll just paste here and then save and next. So now we have the option, we can just stick with one group within this calendar or we can actually create multiple groups. So let's say that we had three coaches in our company and we wanted to create a private coaching session for each coach. We could do that by creating new groups. Maybe we have different topics that we are coaching on and we want them to select according to the topic. For this purpose, let's just go ahead and create one group for a private coaching session. So let's just call this private coaching one. Again, we could add a description if we wanted to. Let's go ahead and select our host from our list. So I'll choose myself. Now, how often do we want them to be able to schedule the private coaching sessions? Meaning, do we want new sessions every 15 minutes or do we want them to be every 180 minutes? Let's just go ahead, since we are selling one hour private coaching sessions, let's go ahead and stick with every 60 minutes. They'll have the ability to make an appointment. The session duration, we are going to actually put at 50 minutes because we want to give a 10 minute interval in between. Okay, so let's go ahead and do 10 minutes here. 
And that will ensure that if we have an appointment at 8 a.m. and then 9 a.m. and then 10 a.m., we are giving ourselves 10 minute break in between each session. So we could use the restroom, maybe make some notes or review the notes for the next appointment. So we'll go ahead and leave this as 10 minutes here. Now let's say that we only offer our private coaching sessions on Monday and Tuesday. We can unselect the other days here. And we can also change the time. So if we want to only do private coaching sessions until 4 p.m. every day, we could just change that here. Maybe on Tuesday, we want to add different times. So we could do 10 to 7. And then we could keep 8 to 5 p.m. on Wednesday. So maybe our business is seasonal and we only want to do coaching sessions in the winter months. So if we wanted to unselect June, July, August, and September, we could do that by unselecting the boxes here. We could also change this here so that we are only available halfway through the month in May. So it's very customizable depending on your availability. So when they book this private coaching session, how many sessions are we giving them for this one price? If we said get three coaching sessions for $100, then we would wanna change this number to three. But since we are doing one coaching session for the one price, we'll go ahead and leave that at one. If we are only available until a certain day, we could put that date here. However, since there is no ending date to our private coaching sessions, we'll go ahead and leave that as indefinitely. Now let's say that we do not want people to be able to schedule a private coaching session the day of. So we could actually select that here. So do not allow today or do not allow today and tomorrow so that we get at least two days to prepare for the private coaching session. We could customize that here, but we'll just go ahead and leave this as the default. So let's say you have a doctor's appointment on October 14th. You could actually add this as a blocked date and no one will be able to schedule a private coaching session, even if it's on your regular availability calendar. We have some advanced configurations here. If you want to automatically approve of their scheduled appointment, you can keep this selected here. But if you wanted to approve them manually, you could do that here. Now, since they have already paid by the time they get to this point, we wanna just go ahead and automatically approve them. You could keep this selected here if you want to allow subscribers to cancel their appointment automatically, or you can choose this option here if you do not want to accept cancellations. But since we want to give them every opportunity to get what they've paid for, we're gonna go ahead and just accept their cancellation if needed. If we wanted them to be limited by the amount of appointments that they can make according to their email address, we could actually select that here. So if we want them to only be able to schedule one time or two times um, by email, we could limit that here, but we'll just go ahead and leave that as no limit and then save it next. Now here we can customize the form that they will be filling out when they are signing up for their coaching session. So this is really important here. We have the ability to collect their phone number. We also have an integration with SMS messages. So if you want to send your confirmation for your appointments or reminders via text message, you definitely want to get their phone number. So you can either hide this option, make it optional or require it. Since I always recommend using the SMS feature, we're gonna go ahead and require their phone number so that we can send them those messages. But just so you know, you do need to have credits in your SMS account to be able to send these text messages. So just make sure that you have done that and you actually have the credits to be able to use this function. So we'll go ahead and click okay here, but let's say we wanted to add a new field. So we could click here and we have the option here. It can be a short text answer. So if we wanna say, how did you hear about us? We could have them choose a short text here. Maybe we wanna ask them what our, their long-term goals are. Uh, we could have them select check boxes. So if we want to say, which of these categories are you interested in learning more about? And then we want them to select multiple. We could also choose a multiple choice. If we want them to choose from a list of options, but only choose one, we can choose multiple choice here. We could also choose a drop down menu, just like this is here. They click on it and then they have choices here to choose from. So let's go ahead and actually we'll add a checkbox here. And we'll say, what are you interested in learning more about? Let's just say option one, and then let's add option two and we'll say option three. And if we wanted to give this information a tag to 
go to our mailing boss so that if we wanted to send out emails specifically to the people who have given me this information, I could add that tag here. You could also toggle this switch here to make this information required. Since we do want that information, we'll just go ahead and toggle that required and then we'll click save. So this is what it's gonna look like on our field. And that's all the information that we wanna collect here. So we'll just go ahead and click save and next. Now we have the option to schedule confirmation notifications, okay? So once they have scheduled in our calendar, we can select to not send the confirmation to our subscribers. However, we can select this option to send them confirmation. And I always recommend sending the confirmation just so they know, hey, we did receive your appointment, you are scheduled, and we can customize that message here. You can change the subject here. You can change any of this information. You can also add additional tags here to the content of your email. All you would need to do if you wanted to add the host email, you could highlight this here, copy, and then you could paste this in the box. Now, no matter who the host is, that information will show up in this tagged area. You could also do the same thing for SMS messages as I described before, but again, make sure that you have credits and you are limited to 140 characters here. So to activate the SMS, all you need to do is toggle active. Let's go ahead and click done. You can send emails to hosts when you have new signups happen. If you have multiple hosts, this is really important. So if you want to select that, you can click there. And if I want to receive emails for new subscription or pending subscriptions, I can also select that here. So if I am not the host and I still want to be notified, I can choose this option to notify the host. In addition, I can choose this option to notify myself. We can choose to not send any reminders for their appointment, or we can choose this option to send reminders. You can also select here to send an email to the host as well. And if you want to add a new reminder, you can do that here. So we have the option already selected to send a reminder an hour before the meeting. But if we wanted to add an additional reminder, we could click here and then click here to edit. And then we could add a reminder to maybe be two hours before or the day before to remind them of our appointment. So we'll just go ahead and leave that as is. We'll just delete this reminder and we'll go ahead and click save and next. So here we have the ability to sync with our Google Calendar. You can choose not to or you can just click here to sync with your Google Calendar. You can select your Google account if you want to, if you do not have a calendar already selected to integrate from the list, you can create new integration here. You can choose the account that you want to sync it with. As soon as you give it permission and allow. Now you can choose the calendars from your list inside your Google account and we'll just say meetings. So now any appointments that I get here will be added to the meetings calendar inside this Google account. Now, by the time they have gotten to this point, they have already subscribed into our list. But if we wanted to add them to a different list, we could choose subscribe to a list and then choose from our drop down box here. However, we're gonna go ahead and just choose to not add to the list because like I said, they've already been added to our list. So we'll go ahead and click save and next. And now we're configuring our calendar. So we have a couple choices to add the calendar to our upsell page. We can add with a link. If you copy here, you can see what the live view of the calendar will look like here. And we said that we were not available in September. So you can see there are no options to schedule in September. But if you go to October, you can see the ability to schedule here. So let's go ahead and say we wanted to schedule on the 6th of October at 10 a.m. Here is the host, here's the day of the schedule and the time. You can see we have our 50 minute duration. You would enter your name. So let's go ahead and do that now. And the email address. And we can select an option here, but you see we can select multiple options. Let's just choose this one and then schedule. And we went to our thank you member access page. So this is really important because if they did not purchase the downsell item, then we want to still give them the ability to do that and also collect their lead magnet. Okay. So the next thing we need to do now is create our group calendar. And then after we've created our calendars, I will show you how to add them to our member access pages. So let's go back to the booking app and let's go to dashboard and we'll create a new calendar and this calendar is going to be a classroom calendar so let's go ahead and call this group coaching and we'll click create new calendar 
So we already have the title of our calendar here. Again, we can add a description if we choose. We can upload the logo here and change the background color like I explained before. We can let the user select their time zone on our calendar or we can select a predefined time zone. It's easier to let them select according to whatever time zone that is for them. If it's 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in my calendar and they are Central Time, it will show up as the correct time for them. So that's important. After they subscribe, we want to send them to the redirect URL, which is our thank you page. So we can select that here and let's go ahead and get the link for the thank you page. And we already have that pulled up here. So we'll just copy the link and we'll paste it here and save and next. So we are actually going to have two groups in this calendar. And that is because we're going to have a class on Thursday evening and we're going to have a class on Friday morning. Okay, so we're going to just call this group coaching one. And let's go ahead and select our host and we'll choose myself. And this one is going to be on Thursday and we're going to choose an evening class. So we'll say 5 p.m. And our class is going to be two hours long. And we're going to make this available every day of the month for the whole year. So let's go ahead and select all of these months. And we can actually choose the size of our class. So if we wanted to limit the subscribers to this class to 100, we could choose this option here. We could change this to 10. If we want a smaller, more exclusive class, we could also toggle this switch to make it completely unlimited. We'll just go ahead and leave that as unlimited. So how many sessions are they going to be receiving in one week? We are going to choose this option, but if we were offering two classes a week for the price that we're selling them, we could choose this or three or four. Let's go ahead and say one class a week is what we're offering. We can choose our start date. We'll just choose today is fine. Again, we could block out any dates. So if there is a Thursday that we have a special event going on, we could block that date out here. We can also use the advanced configuration so we can automatically approve, which is what we want to do since they have already purchased to make this appointment. Or we could approve manually by selecting this option here. We'll go ahead and leave that as automatically approved. We can allow subscribers to cancel their appointment by selecting by keeping this selected, we can also choose to not accept the cancellation. Let's go ahead and leave this as accept. And then we are not going to limit the amount of classes they can schedule. So we'll just go ahead and leave this as no limit and save and next. Now here, again, we can customize the form any way we wish. Since I always want to collect their phone number, I'm going to go ahead and make that required. So I'm going to click OK here. And I'm not going to add any additional fields here, so we'll go ahead and click Save and Next. I can choose here in our first group to send confirmation to the subscribers or not send confirmation. I definitely want to send the confirmation, and again, I can edit that any way I wish here through email or SMS. So we'll just go ahead and leave that as the default and click Done. We'll go ahead and send emails to the host and we'll go ahead and send them to myself as well. We can choose to not send any reminders about the upcoming class, but I always like to send the reminder. So I'll choose this option here. I want to send a reminder email to the host as well. And we'll go ahead and just leave the standard default for one hour before the meeting and we'll click save and next. I can choose to sync this to my Google Calendar or to not sync to Google. Let's go ahead and sync it to the calendar. And since I've already done that once, let's just go ahead and use the same calendar. So we'll choose meetings. We can also subscribe them to a mailing list by selecting here and choosing the list. However, since they've already opted into our funnel, we don't need them to subscribe to the same list. So we'll just click do nothing and then save and next. So now we are configuring our calendar and we have completed this calendar for our first group. But let's go back and edit this calendar to add an additional group. So we can do that inside of scheduling. So let's go ahead and select the drop down menu here and you'll see it says add new group. So now we are in the settings for group two and we're going to call this group coaching. And this is going to be our Friday class. OK, so let's go ahead and select our host, which we will choose as myself. And let's make this a Friday class 
and we'll make this Friday in the morning, but let's go ahead and choose 10 a.m. It's gonna be a two hour class and we will make this every day of the year. So we'll go ahead and select all the months here. We can limit the amount of subscribers in our list or we can choose unlimited. So we'll go ahead and just toggle that for unlimited subscribers. And we only want them to schedule one session every single week. So we'll choose this option here. We'll go ahead and have the start date be today. But if we wanted to change that, we could do that by selecting any day of the calendar here. If we wanted to block out dates, we could choose those dates here and we would click add but we'll go ahead and choose no dates selected. We could add the advanced configurations here to automatically or manually approve new appointments. We can also accept or not accept cancellations and we could limit the scheduling by email address, but we'll leave that unlimited and we'll go ahead and click save. So now we have created the second group in our calendar. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like live. So we have group coaching session one and group coaching session two. You can see if they want group coaching session one and they wanna sign up for that class at 5 p.m., they can choose this here. It says join, and then they will enter their information and then schedule their class. So let's go ahead and do that now. And it takes you to our thank you page. So now that our calendar is connected and everything is functioning and going where it needs to go, let's go ahead and add it to our upsell member access page and the downsell member access page. So to do that, we need to go to our Cheetah website. And the first one that we're going to add is going to be on the upsell member access page. So we'll go to edit page. And the first thing we wanna do is add a blank panel. So we'll click blank panel here. And let's go to elements. And look how easy. We just click here for the booking and then we drag that booking element to our panel. You can see here we can choose whether we want to use our group coaching or our private coaching calendars. Since this is going to be the upsell member access page, we're going to add our private coaching calendar here. So we'll go ahead and select this. If we want to add the information to our calendar, like the host and the duration of the meeting, we can keep this selected as yes or choose not to. We'll go ahead and show that information. And also we can choose to show all of the calendars or we can choose a specific group to show. Since our private coaching calendar only has one group, we only have one group to choose from. So let's go ahead and just choose all calendar and then save. So now that you see, we have our calendar connected to our page. So let's go ahead and save and let's look at the live view. So to do that, let's go back here and we'll go ahead and go to web page. And you see we have our private coaching calendar here. So let's go ahead and add our group coaching calendar to our downsell member access page. So to do that, let's go ahead and close out of this and we'll close out of this and leave and let's go ahead and go to our downsell member access page. And we want to add a panel and we will go to elements, choose booking, and we'll just drag that app over to our panel. So since we want to choose the group coaching, we'll go ahead and show the information on this calendar and we can choose the entire calendar or since we have multiple groups in this calendar, we could choose to show one group or two groups. Maybe you have a funnel where you want to divide this and show the one coaching session on one page and maybe you want the group coaching two to be on another page. So it's really cool that you can choose and customize this in so many ways. Let's just go ahead and choose the entire calendar and we'll click save. So let's go ahead and save and look at the live view. Let's go back and access our page here by clicking the dot. And you'll see we have our group coaching session here. So we can choose, do we want to schedule on group one, which is at 5 p.m. for two hours on Thursday here? Or do we want to choose the class on coaching two and schedule here? So we could just highlight which one we wanted. We could click like this, or we could choose to click like this and then join. And then now we enter the information to schedule for that class. Now there's one more thing that we need to do before we test out our funnel. The way that we had this set up before, once they purchase the upsell product, they're gonna go directly to the thank you page. The same with the downsell product, they'll go directly to the thank you page. However, what we want them to do is go to the scheduler and then the thank you page. 
The same with the down sell page, okay? So since we already set up the scheduler to redirect to the thank you page, we now need to go and set the checkout to direct to the scheduler pages. So to do that, we need to go back to our super checkout. So let's go ahead and do that now. And we can access the super checkout here and we want to access our products. So we're going to go to edit our down sell product first and we will keep all of this the same and we'll just click next and next. Here's the part that we need to access. So our thank you page, meaning after they have purchased the down sell product, we want to send them to the down sell membership page. And that is where they will access the scheduler. So let's go ahead and click save here. And we want to go to the upsell product and we'll go ahead and click next here and next here and next again. And then we will change the thank you page for our upsell product to be the upsell membership page. Okay, so now we click save. And let's go ahead and we'll go back to our funnel. So we'll close this out. And let's go ahead and republish. And let's go ahead and test out our funnel. So we'll go copy this. I want to open up a guest window here. So let's go ahead and paste the link here to test out our funnel. First thing we need to do is register for our free download and to enter our password and we'll click confirm and we come to our email confirmation page where we are instructed to check our email to confirm our membership so i'll go ahead and check my email now and you'll see that we received our two emails so the first email is to welcome us into the membership area with the email and password and we also have another email to confirm the subscription so we can click here to confirm but since I'm in a different browser, I just want to copy this link here and then I'll paste it in my browser, but they both work the same. So we'll go ahead and paste that link here to confirm. So now we come to our front end sales page. So we can either choose to purchase this or we can get out. Since we only have one option, we'll go ahead and choose to purchase. And this front end offer is amazing to us. So we'll go ahead and click continue. And I'll go ahead and enter my information here. And we'll go ahead and save my information for future payments. So we'll go ahead and click pay. And congratulations, we have purchased our front end product. Let's go ahead and click continue. And we go to the upsell page. So we can either purchase the upsell page or we can say no thank you. Let's actually just say no thank you to the upsell. So we'll click here. And we can purchase the downsell item or we can say no thank you let's go ahead and purchase the downsell item which is our group coaching so we will click continue and i'll go ahead and enter my password again and we'll click pay and we've purchased our downsell product so let's click continue and you'll see now we have the option to schedule our appointment so let's go ahead and schedule that now we'll choose the coaching class on Thursday at five, we'll enter our name and schedule. And now you see we've gone to the thank you page. Since we didn't purchase the upsell product, you'll see if you click here, you do not have access, but we did purchase the front end product. So you'll see we do have access there. And also for our lead magnet, we can click there and then we have access to that as well. If you want to click the downsell product again, you have access there. But remember, since we only chose one occurrence, they can't now schedule two occurrences because we've only allowed one when we were creating our booking calendar. So let's review what we've done today. We created our private coaching calendar, our group coaching calendar, and we also added them to our upsell member area and the downsell member area. We also redirected our checkouts to make sure that they go to our scheduling page and then the thank you page. Same with the downsell page. We redirected our checkout to go to the scheduling page, which would be the downsell member area and then the thank you page. So now that we've added our scheduler to each page and tested out our funnel, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to find a free ebook to add to the registration page to entice them to opt in so we can start getting leads. Until then, go build it with Builderall. Hey all, Bridget Bartlett here. I am the local business marketing training and support specialist with Builderall. Welcome to step eight of our extended funnel challenge. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use PLR products as a lead magnet for your sales funnel.
Since we're customizing our universal upsell and downsell funnel for our coaching business, we want to find a lead magnet that will attract our target audience. So let's talk about that by working backwards. The goal of this funnel is to sell private and group coaching sessions. So if you are the coach, every step before that offer should be to position yourself as someone they would actually pay for coaching from. So the lead magnet and course are a great way to introduce yourself and give them an idea of the value you can provide for them. So let's look for some PLR products that we could use as the lead magnet for our funnel. The PLR website that I like to use is idplr.com. It's free. You can purchase a lifetime license for roughly $80 at the time I'm making this video. Since we're looking for an ebook, you can go to products up here and you can search the category of the product that you're looking for. Since we are going to be giving this product away, we want to look in ebooks for giveaway rights. And there are many, many niches available here. So if you scroll down here, if you are in marketing or real estate or maybe even gardening, there are lots of options. You also see on the right hand side, there are many niches where they have PLR products with an ebook and then even a video course. So if you are not positioning yourself, you could technically use these products as is. However, if you are wanting to position yourself as a coach with the purpose of private and group coaching sessions that they will need to purchase, you definitely want to brand these products as your own. So even if you choose to use this video course, you can recreate it. You can even use the slides and everything, but you want to use your own voice and your own brand and make sure that you are the authority of this whole sales funnel. Okay. So the course that I'm going to use for the sales funnel is actually the sales funnel challenge that we are working on right now. So I want my lead magnet to be something that someone would want if they are interested in growing their business with sales funnels. So there's a great option here. We're going to go ahead and download this ebook. So all we need to do is just simply click download. Let's go ahead and open up the file. And this is a zip file. So we need to click extract all to get access. And if you double click in the file, you see we have the ebook covers here available to use. We also have the ebook. So if you double click in that, you see that we have the ebook in a PDF file, but we may want to edit this file. So to do that, we can use a software called PDF Candy. This is totally free. All you need to do is click PDF to Word, add the PDF file. And then you can download as a Word document. And if you open it up, you'll see that we can now edit this file. We can add our own cover here. We can add our name anywhere we wanted to. We can add our own branding and colors and customize this any way that we chose, okay? And then you would want to just save this as a PDF. We'll go ahead and leave that as is. But we do definitely want to create a cover for our ebook that is branded to us. So to do that, I'm going to use Canva and you can see to save time, I've already created a cover. So to make this look more professional, what I'm going to do is actually use the mock-up studio inside the Builder All Back Office to create a 3D image of our ebook. So let's go ahead and go to the Builder All Back Office and let's go into the mock-up studio. And you'll see we have many, many designs here. So this is just as simple as uploading the correct image size, and then your image will be in the blue areas here. So let's look for an ebook that we can use. And here's a good one. So we'll click here. And you see that it says we need the image size to be 768 by 1024. So let's go back to Canva. And you see the image size that I have created is 768 by 1024. So we'll go ahead and upload that image into our mock-up studio. And we can make some adjustments if we need it. But since this is already exactly how I want it, we'll just go ahead and click Done. And then see mock-up. And now we have a professional 3D image of our ebook that is branded to us. Okay. So let's go ahead and just download this image. And we'll close out of this. And let's go back to our back office and let's enter our Cheetah app and start editing our lead magnet page. So we need to enter our sales funnel and then we want to go to the first page here because this is our registration page. You see that we have nothing on this page yet, but let's go ahead and just add another panel. So we'll go add panels and let's choose the lead magnet page here. So we have some templates that we can choose. 
Let's go ahead and we'll just choose this one. Now we can customize this however we wish. You see we still have our registration button here. So that is the action that we want them to take when they're entering our sales funnel. Remember, this is already set up to go to the right place. So all we need to do is move this button, okay? So we want to take this registration form out. So we'll delete. And then we want to replace with this button. If we're trying to move to the next panel, you see it just kind of hides behind that panel. We can actually change the order by clicking the edit button here. We could go to advanced and then move this to the top. And you see now it goes over that panel. So we just want to add this button here. Of course, we want to design it, make it look more congruent, but let's just get the function down first, okay? So we can actually delete this panel now because we know what page this is. We've already started designing. Let's go ahead and change the ebook to be our branded ebook. So we can edit the image here, go to general settings, and let's upload the image of the ebook that we just created. And we'll select it and click save. And now you see we have our ebook image here. Since it's on the right hand side, we'll just go ahead and change this up a little bit. We'll move this arrow over here. We can actually rotate this around so it points the correct direction. Let's expand this just a little bit. Lots of things we can do to customize this here. We'll go ahead and change our headline here. And we could actually just keep this as is. We'll just move these things around here. We definitely want to either delete this testimonial or actually get a real testimonial. That would be the best practice. But for this purpose, we'll just go ahead and keep it as is because we have the functionality of our funnel now, okay? So we have our branded ebook cover, we have our catchy headline. We're telling them download your free digital copy today. And when they register here, you'll see that they go into our membership area to start going through the sales funnel process. So after they register here, they'll go to our confirm your email page. So let's go ahead and edit the mobile version. But before we do that, let's go ahead and click save. And we'll go to mobile. So you can see mobile is basically already done for us. There are just a few little things that we need to do to make it look better, okay? So let's go ahead and we can left click in this box and we'll just click the down arrow just to move this button where we want it to be. And let's go ahead and we'll click on the image here and we'll make that a little bit larger. So let's go to lateral spacing and we can just drag this bar here to make that image larger. Let's go ahead and make the button a little bit smaller. So we'll click on the edit element and we will go to advanced and we can access the lateral spacing there. So we'll just bring that in a little bit. And that's all we need to do to adjust for the mobile view. So let's go back to the desktop now and then save. And of course we want to keep working on this. We may want to add, you know, definitely some more copy here just to make it sound more appealing. Maybe we want to throw in some statistics here to say how successful sales funnels are, more information to entice them into the offer. So now that I've showed you how to find and customize PLR products for your coaching sales funnel, and we've created our lead magnet registration page, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to create your email confirmation page to encourage a high opt-in Rate, even if you're using a double opt-in. So until then, go build it with Builderall. Hey y'all, Bridget Bartlett here. I am the local business marketing training and support specialist with Builderall. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create your email confirmation page and help you give some ideas to increase the likelihood of your lead taking action to confirm their email. Our funnel is set up as a double opt-in, which means they'll enter their email here and then come to this page where we instruct them to check their email to confirm. This is an incredibly important step to growing a quality email list with subscribers who actually want to hear from you. Have you ever 
wondered why your emails end up in the spam folder, using a double opt-in will help prevent that by building the reputation of your email address. Now, will you have a bunch of leads that never confirm? Yes, but those leads are the ones who will never open your emails anyway and lower your delivery rate. So this is a good thing. So how do we entice them to take that extra step? By giving them incentives like I'm gonna show you today. So let's go ahead and enter our Cheetah Builder and start editing our email confirmation page. We can do that here in the Builder All dashboard by clicking Enter. And we need to edit our sales funnel. And let's scroll down to the email confirmation page and click Edit Page. Now you'll see we already have our instructions here of what to do on this page, okay? But obviously it's not very attractive. So let's go ahead and start designing. And we can do that by clicking Add, Panel. And if you scroll down here, you'll actually see a confirm email page. So sticking with our theme from our opt-in page, let's just go ahead and choose the course confirmation email page. So according to our instructions here, we just need to let them know to check their email to confirm the membership. So you can see we already have that information here. So let's just go ahead and delete this panel. So I showed you in the last video how to customize PLR products to brand and position yourself as an authority. So to prepare for this video, I branded additional products to offer them to push them towards the next step. So let me go ahead and change this image here to show you what I'm talking about. Go to change image and let's go ahead and upload that image. And we'll just select the image and click save. So now you see what I've done is just simply brand two more PLR products. So we offer them on the first page how to grow your business with sales funnels. And then I added how to boost your online sales and then a checklist for boosting your online sales. So what I'm trying to do is tell them, hey, guess what? You have been pre-qualified to receive this upgraded bonus success pack for free. So I'm saying, oh my gosh, you can actually get extra stuff than what you thought originally. Okay. So we want to just push them over the edge. So now if they are already just expecting this one ebook, when I'm telling them, hey, guess what? Now you can get these other two items and all you have to do is just confirm your email. So are you understanding the psychology there of just adding the extra value to push them towards the next step? And if you think about your sales funnel in that way of every time you want them to do something, offer them something in exchange for that action, okay? So now let's start editing this page here. So let's go ahead and we'll just move this over because we need just a little bit more room in this box. So we'll just stretch that out. Let's go ahead and kind of get this in the middle. And we can actually align this in the middle by clicking in the box and then clicking here to center. Let's move this text over a little bit. We'll just click and drag. And let's add some text to the top here because we need a headline. So we'll go to add and then elements and we'll choose text. Let's go ahead and choose an H1 title. And we'll say, congratulations. But you see, it's too big. Actually, we spelled it wrong. So we can go ahead and click congratulations here. And if you guys don't have this extension installed in your Google Chrome, you should. It's called Grammarly. And it will correct any mistakes that you made, which is incredibly helpful when you're designing emails or uh, when you're designing web pages or anything like that, just to have that second check. So we'll go ahead and select that to change the spelling. We can drag this over. We want to expand this text box here. We can even center this here by clicking the center. Let's move this down a little bit. And let's add just a little bit more text here because we really wanna push them to that next step. So let's go ahead and add an H2 title, and we'll say, you have been upgraded for free. And we'll click out of the box, click back in the box, that'll help us drag this box here. So we want to center this, click there and click center. And we want to not only just show them the image here, but we wanna tell them what they're actually getting in this pack, okay? This is what I'm calling success pack. So let's go ahead and change this text here and we'll say something like, you have been pre-qualified to receive my success pack. And we'll change the spelling again. Thank you, Grammarly. Let's stretch this out just a little bit. Okay, 
So that looks pretty good. Move this stuff down because we're going to use that for something else. So let's double click in this text here because we're actually going to change that so we can let them know exactly what they're getting here. So let's type in you are going to receive and let's just go ahead and left justify that. We could actually just duplicate this text here. if We want it to be the same style and size. And then let's go ahead and just start typing in the titles of the book so they know what they're getting. Now you can see this kind of looks generic as it is. Let's stretch this out here. So let's go ahead and add some little elements here to the side, like maybe some arrows pointing to it, just to add a little emphasis on the bonuses they're getting here. So we can left click in the box here. And you see, I'm going to move the cursor to the left of that H. And if you click this little icon, you can actually select symbols to use. So let's type in arrow because that's what I want. And I want to see the selection of arrows we have available. Okay, so let's just go ahead and choose one that is pointing to the right. So we'll select that and click select. So now you see we have this arrow pointing to our sales funnel. Let's go ahead and do that to the other two options as well. And if you click back in the box, it'll actually select the same one that you already were using. So all you have to do is click select to make sure you got the same one. So we'll do the same for this one. And click select. Okay, so now we have our bonuses listed here and make them stand out just a little bit more. Let's move this a little bit because I don't like that sales funnels being on a different line. So we'll just play with this here. Let's move this here just to center it up. And you see as we move this around, we have those green guidelines. So that helps you to center things. If you wanted it more straight, you could also use the ruler and you could just click here to create a line. So if I wanted to make sure that everything on my website was within this guide here, I could also add vertical lines. So very, very um, user-friendly and customizable. If you want to get rid of this, all you need to do is highlight on the line there and then just click it and it goes away. So we'll do that here as well. So let's move this down just a little bit because I like to have the top of the text lined up with the image. And we'll move this up a little and this up just a little. And we want to center this. And you see as you move this around, it, it'll show you the center of the text there. But with this, first of all, we don't want a, a quote that is not or a testimonial that is not real. But here, let's go ahead and give them instructions on what to do. So we need to tell them. The next step, check your email to confirm. Let's go ahead and make this bold as well because we want to make sure that they see this text. Okay, so now it's pretty clear, but let's add some animation as well. So let's just left click once in the box and we'll click edit element. And you see we have this box here. So let's go to animation. And we have several animations that we can choose from. What I'm looking for right now is I just want this text to flash. Okay, so let's go ahead and just choose flash, but we could choose any of these if we chose. But I do like this flash because it will just keep flashing as soon as they're on the page. Okay, so now this is pretty straightforward. It's pretty clear exactly what the instructions are, what they're going to be getting. Let's go ahead and save. But before we're finished with this page, we need to edit the mobile version. So let's go up here and click the mobile view. And you'll see we have just a few issues that we want to address. First of all, this is too large and we need this to be at the top. So let's start by moving that to the top. And if you left click in the box and click on edit element, and go to general settings, you'll see that we don't have the option to change the size here. Okay. And that is because it is a global text. So if we want to change the size on the mobile view for the global text, we need to come up here to the global elements. We'll X out of this. And you'll see we chose an H1 title. So to customize that, we need to go to the H1 title fonts. And then we want to change the size on mobile. But keep in mind, when you change the size here, it will change the size on every H1 text 
in the mobile view. Okay, it will change that size. So if you don't want to do that, I'm going to show you a different way. Okay, so let's click out of here to exit. Let's go back to the mobile view and let's double click in the text and you'll see that it is an H1 heading. Okay, so let's go down and change this to an H1 neutral heading. We'll click there and you see now this heading is separate from all of our global elements. So we can do whatever we want with this and it will not change anything that we have on the other web pages. So we can choose any font that we like, but let's go ahead and stick with the same font that we chose. So it was Molly Black. Let's go ahead and make this. We'll give it a size of 50. Actually, let's make it a little bit bigger. So we'll choose 55. So now that it's neutral, let's go back to the mobile view. And you'll see it already looks better, but it's still just a little bit too large. So let's left click in there, click edit element. But now you see we can change the size on the mobile because it's a neutral text. So let's make it just a little bit smaller so it's not hanging off the edge there. And now that looks much better than it did before. Let's go ahead and move this text up here and it does look a little bit weird we probably want to have this on two lines so let's see let's edit the text there but you, you can see again that it's a global element so let's go back to the desktop and we'll just make it neutral so we'll double click here and we'll highlight and we'll make this a neutral heading too and we will select our font and we'll change the size We'll change that to 40. Okay, looks good. So let's go back to mobile. And we'll left click in the box, edit element. And now you see we can change the size. So let's change the size until we like what it looks like. Okay, looks good. So now we have this text here, which looks pretty good. We do wanna make this image a little bit larger. So if you left click in the image and click edit element, you could go down here to lateral spacing and you can actually move this and make the image larger or smaller. So we'll go ahead and leave it there. That looks pretty good. But this is actually centered and I want to have it left justified. So let's go to general settings and we can click left. And that's all we need to do there. Same with this because you see the arrows should be lined up. So let's go ahead and click there and we will left justify that as well. Let's go ahead and add some space at the bottom here because it's really close to the bottom of that box. So let's go down here to advanced and you see where it says bottom. We just want to increase that space there. If we want to change this text here and make it a little bit larger, we could because it is a neutral text. So we could increase the size just to make sure that it's very clear they know what to do. And it looks good. So let's go back to the desktop and we want to save. So now that we've created our email confirmation page and given some extra incentive to confirm their email, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to edit and create the next page, our front end offer page. So until then, go build it with BuilderAll. Hey y'all, Bridget Bartlett here. I am the local business marketing training and support specialist for BuilderAll. Welcome to step 10 of our funnel challenge. Today we're going to design the front end offer page of our upsell and downsell sales funnel. That will be this page right here. This will be the page that we deliver our lead magnet and also offer them the first item we are going to sell. So let's get started by entering the Cheetah Builder and edit our funnel. We can do that inside the BuilderAll back office by clicking enter in the Cheetah app. And we want to choose the sales funnel we're working on. So we'll go ahead and choose this and edit site. And we want to edit the front end sales page. So we'll go ahead and click edit page. Now, if you remember from step two, we've already added the button. So if you've missed step two, make sure to go back and watch that. But this button right here is connected to our front end offer. Okay, so this is the item we want them to purchase. So the purpose of this page is to offer them this front end item and also deliver the lead magnet that we promised them when they opted into our sales funnel. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and add a panel like always. And if you scroll down here, you'll see that there's actually checkout banners. So let's go ahead and choose that. And we only have one option right now, so let's choose this and get started. 
Now, when we created our item, we had some options. So we could add the checkout item to a button or we could add with an iframe. And this is what the iframe would look like. Since we wanna keep ours very simple and this is a little bit more advanced, let's just go ahead and we'll delete this iframe so we have a clean working space. We'll delete our little message here. So let's go ahead and take our button and we can move it down here, but let's make sure that it pops up to the front there. And we'll just put this button down here. So now we have everything that we need on this panel and we can go ahead and delete this panel here. So we'll just click in the panel and then trash can and that's fine. Okay, so before we get going, let's go ahead and just save. And that's fine. And close. And remember, this front end offer is going to be the course for this funnel challenge that we're doing right now, okay? Because the upsell item is going to be a private coaching session, and then the downsell item is going to be a group coaching session. So the first thing we want to do, let's go ahead and just change this image to promote the funnel challenge. And in preparation for this video, I've already created that by using the mock-up studio that we talked about in the last video. So let's go ahead and click here to edit element and we will go to general settings and let's up upload that image now. We'll select file and let's select the image and click save. Okay, so now we have the promo image for our funnel challenge. And now all we need to do is just change the information. But again, remember, we want to also deliver our items that we promised as a lead magnet. So let's go ahead and we'll just take this information here and we want to just add it to this panel here. So we'll just move this stuff over and let's go ahead and move this into the box and we'll move this into the box. So now we have everything that we need here to promote this item. Let's go ahead and move this down just a little bit. And then let's add another panel. And this one, we'll just choose a blank panel. And we need to add some buttons because we want to give them access to download the files. So we'll go to buttons. And another button here, because remember we had three items that we were going to give them. Let's go ahead and add an image here because we're just setting up this page with all the things that we need and then we'll start designing. So let's go to image and we'll just drag this image here. Oops, let's move this over so we have some room. Now we'll drag the image here. Let's go ahead and we'll expand this panel here by clicking in the box and dragging the line. Let's add our image, click edit element, go over to general settings, change image, and we already uploaded it. So let's just go ahead and click save once we've selected it. So now we have the original image that they saw on the email confirmation page. And then we have the buttons here to deliver those products. Go ahead and change our message here. Okay, so now we have the layout for the products we're gonna deliver for the lead magnet, and we also have the checkout section here. So let's start customizing now. We could just change this headline here, and we'll just say sales funnel challenge, and we want to add the main benefit it says here. So let's go ahead and add some text. We'll left click in the box and just change the text here. And we could leave the price the same. You can change that to whatever you want to. We'll just say 49.90 is fine. Let's go ahead and change the description. We'll just left click in the box. And then I already have this written out, so I'm just gonna click Control V to paste. Now we have our benefits here. So what are the benefits of this sales funnel challenge? So what are they gonna get when they purchase this? So here is where I'm going to put the steps of our funnel challenge. So I'm just gonna copy and paste here, Control V. But you see, we don't have the little, um, the little icons. So let's go ahead and add those. We'll move this stuff down a little bit. Let's go ahead and just delete this because our funnel challenge has not been seen anywhere and we definitely want to be honest and have integrity when we are promoting our brand. So we can left click in the box here. Let's stretch this out just a little bit. I don't like those steps being on a different line, but 
we'll just have to make do. To add the little icons you want to, here's what I like to do because it's hard to get on this left side here. So what I like to do is just click to the right of the first letter and then I'll use my left arrow to move over. And now I know that I am on the edge of this first letter, okay? So you can see there's a space there. So I'll just click backspace and then let's go ahead and add our icon. So let's just use the same one that they use. So let's find it here. And we'll select that one and select. So now we have our little symbol here. Now we can add a space. And let's do the same thing with the other steps. So I'll put the cursor to the right of the S, go to the left, and then backspace. And now I can choose my icon. And it already selects the icon I used previously. So we'll just click Select and then I'll add a space again. So let's do the same thing for the rest of these. Okay, so now we have all of our benefits li listed here. And since there's a line in between, since there are multiple lines here, let's just go ahead and add a space in between because we definitely want to highlight what they're going to get in here because this is what's really gonna push them over into taking action to purchase, okay? Because remember, at this point, they actually have to get up out of their seat or stop what they're doing, and they have to go get their debit card to actually make, make this purchase, okay? So it's really important to really sell them at this point because you need them to take action. So let's go ahead and we want to save what we've been working on because save is our friend, and we'll click close. Okay, let's move this down just a little bit. Let's go ahead and we'll just put this right here. This is really an important part of this as well because you want them to be compelled to take that action. And you're letting them know like, hey, this is only going to be available for one day and 11 hours. And that little ticking clock psychologically, that lets us know we really need to take action if we want this. So we actually think twice about it when we see this little timer here. So let's go ahead and we just need to change this so that it fits in our box. Let's move this down just a little bit. Actually, let's go ahead and we'll just, we'll swap these out here. We'll put this at the top and let's go ahead and put some of this description here at the bottom. So as far as designing your website, you know, just play around and see what looks right. You know, maybe we want to double click in this box and we want to give some bold text for words that you want to stand out. So now when they look at this, they automatically see automating your sales process in no time. So that's another benefit. We'll just move these things around. We can customize all of this, but you get the point here. We're just designing this funnel from the template, which makes it really easy. Let's go ahead and we'll just move this down here. Okay. So now let's go down to the bottom part here and it looks kind of plain and it's ugly and we need to add our products here that we've offered them. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll make this background a different color. So let's use one of our branded colors. And remember, I always say to keep a little cheat sheet to have your branded colors easily accessible, but you can also click here to edit the panel. And when you access your colors, we'll go to background settings and click here to change the color. But you see, you can add colors down here. So if you chose a branded color, you just put the hex code here and click Control V to paste. And then now you can click this plus sign here and add it to your, your color selection. That way you don't have to look up the hex code again. So obviously now this is black and we want to change this to white. So we can just go up here, just like a Word document, highlight. We'll select the text color editor and let's just choose white. Okay, so now it's a little bit more visible. Let's go ahead and just put a box back here. So we'll go back to add elements and let's go to choosing a box. We have some selections here. I like to choose this one because it already has the hover effect behind it or the shadow rather. So let's just drag that over here. So now that it's added, we'll just go ahead and stretch it across this panel here. And let's go ahead and move this to the top. So we'll select our item and go to edit element. There we go. Now we want to move our buttons on top of the box. And we will drag our image here. If I want all these buttons to be the same, all I need to do is edit the first button. And I wanna show you how you can just duplicate the button once you get it how you want it, okay? So let's go ahead and edit the element. 
and let's choose the colors. And remember, we always want to choose branded colors. So we already added our purple, but let's go ahead and add another branded color. We'll choose orange. And then I will highlight the hex code here and then control V to paste. Now we have our orange color. I'll just go ahead and add that to my color panel. Now, anytime I need that orange color, I can just simply click that instead of looking for the hex code. So I have my orange button here. Let's go ahead and we want to change the hover effect. So when you hover over the button, we want it to change a different color because we want to make it very clear that they can click this button. Okay, so we can choose another branded color. So actually, let's choose another a different color here. So we'll choose this yellow. I will highlight and control V. Let's go ahead and add that color to our panel as well. So now when you hover over this, the background color will change to a little bit lighter of a shade. So we can also change the text of the hover, so or the color of the text when we hover over it. So let's go ahead and we'll just change that to white. Actually, we'll keep that black. And then to change the color of the text now, we can click in the headline and we'll change that to white. Now let's change the headline of this button to be the headline of our first book. So we'll just write how to grow your business online. So now that we have all of the colors, let's go ahead and we want to just duplicate this button. So we can delete these. We'll just click in the box and click the trash can to delete. And we'll click here and we'll delete this button as well. And let's go ahead and we'll just duplicate this. And let's duplicate it again. And now that we have our buttons all formatted, now we need to change the titles of the other two buttons. So we'll left click in the element and go to edit element. And let's change the headline here. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for this one. So we'll edit element and let's change the heading. Okay, and now let's go ahead and attach the files. So we'll click in the box, we'll go to set the action. And we want to go to download and select the file that we want them to download. So to upload the file to our gallery, we click select file and let's upload our file. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and upload the other two. So if you want to select multiple files, you can click the control button and then left click to select the other two items and then open and then it uploads all the items at one time. So let's go ahead and select this one for the first item and we'll click select. Let's go ahead and add the second item here. We'll left click in the button and we'll set the action. Go to download, select the file. And this one is going to be boost your online sales. So we'll click save and then select. And then we have one more. So we'll go set the action, download, select file, checklist here. So we'll click save and select. And now let's go ahead and save our page, close. And our box is a little bit large, so let's go ahead and expand this panel a little bit so we can left click in the panel. And we can either drag the blue line at the bottom here, or there's another way that you can change the height of your panel. So if you click in the add an element and you go to sizes, you can increase the minimum size as well as the height. So now we have more room in our panel. You can also, if you want to decrease the size, you can just drag that line up there. So we'll move this a little bit, just line this up correctly, and we will just center this. Now we do want to do a little bit more work on this, make it a little bit more attractive, but the very most important thing that we need to remember is to always check your mobile view because 85% of people will only access your site through the mobile view, okay? So it's really important to make it look good on mobile. So let's go ahead and click into the mobile view. And you can see most of these things are already lined up correctly. We just have a little bit of work to do. See, this looks fine. We definitely want to move this buy now button down here. So let's click on the element and then we'll just click the down arrow to move it. Now remember, every time that you have an item on the mobile view, you can only rearrange it within that panel or box, okay? You can't rearrange it outside. So there are other tips and tricks on how to optimize that as well, like using transparent boxes, but we're not gonna go into detail in this course because we are just focusing on the flow and the details of the funnel, okay? So let's go ahead and we'll just rearrange this. We'll click there and add this up to the top. 
So you see this timer, it kind of goes off the edge of this box here. So let's go ahead and we'll just make this box a little bit larger by clicking in the box. And you see it says box up here to let you know you've clicked on the right thing. And then it's also the box is highlighted in blue. So let's go ahead and click edit element. We can go to lateral spacing and let's just make this a little bit larger. So we'll go, there you go. So now our timer is not hanging off the edge there. So let's go ahead and we'll click in this text here and make sure that it's justified to the left. So we'll click edit element, go to general settings, and then justify that to the left. We can make this button just a little bit smaller. So we'll click in the button and we'll go to advanced and we'll adjust the lateral spacing here to make it a little bit smaller. We want our image to be above the elements here. If we want to make this a little bit smaller, we can click in the image, go to edit element, and then lateral spacing, and we'll make it a little bit smaller. If we want to make our button smaller, we could do the same thing here. So we'll click in the button and we'll go to advanced and we'll make it just a little bit smaller there. Now to make sure that all of your buttons are the same size, you can just change the number here. So if you want them to be 20, you can just go to the next button click to edit that element, and then we'll change this to 20 as well. And we'll do the next one and edit element. And then we can also type in 20. So there's not that much space here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and we'll just add a little bit of space at the bottom there. And let's move this above that box. There we go. So let's scroll up here and see what this looks like. All right, looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and go back to the desktop view. And of course we want to save and let's preview. But here's what the live version of what our front end sales page is gonna look like. So it looks pretty good. I would still do some editing, maybe make this a little bit smaller, add some more text here to make it more appealing. Lots of things that we can do, but you get the basic function and the basic layout of the information that you need to be giving them on the front end off our page because remember the goal of this sales funnel is to get them to purchase something i would also probably change the buy now button when you click on this it takes you to the checkout where you can purchase the item so now that we've designed our front end sales page to deliver our lead magnets and front end offer in the next video we're going to design our upsell page so until then go build it with builderall Hey y'all, Bridget Bartlett here. I am the local business marketing training and support specialist for Builderall. Welcome to step 11 of our funnel challenge. Today we're going to design our upsell page for our coaching sales funnel. So let's enter the Cheetah Builder and get started. We can click here inside the Builderall back office to enter the Cheetah Builder. And let's go ahead and edit our sales funnel. And we want to edit the upsell page. So we'll go ahead and click edit page. And if you remember from the step two video, we already have our buy now button and our no thank you button because the upsell is the first time that we're going to give them an option. So we want them to either buy now or say no thank you, and then they will go to the downsell page. So like every website that we create, let's go ahead and click add to add a panel and we'll click panels. And if you scroll down here, you see an application page. So let's go ahead and stick with the same theme that we've been working here and we'll select this option here. So it's the course application page panel. Now, one of the best things that you can do for any funnel or any product that you're trying to create is to have a video. So for something like coaching, that's even more important because you are positioning yourself, you're selling yourself as the expert that they actually will pay money to spend time with and talk to. Okay. So one of the best things that you can do is create a application process because not only do you want to make sure that you you can help them, but also you want them to get into the mindset of you being the authority and you're not just begging them for money. You're saying, if you're the right person, I would be happy to coach you and help you with your business. It's also a way of saying like, Hey, I don't take everyone. So basically consider yourself lucky or consider yourself special in some way that I am going to spend the time to coach you. Okay. So it's all about putting them in that mindset. So again, because I want them to take action, I want to add an extra incentive. Okay. So I've created another mock-up and let's go ahead and just upload that image here. 
So we'll click to edit element and we will go to change image. And I've already uploaded this, so I'm just gonna select it from the gallery and click save. So now you see what I've done here is I've created a mock-up that says your customized business blueprint path to success. Okay, because I want them to know that when I'm doing this coaching session, that I'm going to work with them and come up with their individual blueprint for their business, for their specific business, for them to reach their specific goals. Okay, that's a really important part of private coaching is you don't want to just a generic game plan, you want a path for you individually. And that's why you're paying for the private coaching session. So let's go ahead and we're just actually going to move this over here. I'm just going to move this stuff around over to the right so we can make room for our image. And with these things here, you definitely want to, just like it says, you want to add the benefits. So what are they going to get in this, this coaching session with their blueprint? They're going to get, you know, all of these things listed and to line up these horizontally or vertically so that they all are in order and straight, you can actually click shift and then left click. And when you do that, you see we have the options here to align vertically or horizontally. Since this is a vertical list, I just want to keep the shift key pressed down and then I'm going to left click on each of these things. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to line them all up straight. So once we have them all selected and they're highlighted in blue, as you see, if you click align vertically, they all line up in order. So let's go ahead and save that just so that it stays that way. And you definitely want to have, you know, a catchy title up here, but let's go ahead and we're just going to move these elements that we need to our bottom panel. So this doesn't want to go to the top. So like we talked about before, what I'm going to do is click here. I'm going to go to advanced and then I'm just going to move this to the top. So now that it slides over that, so we'll just Go ahead and add that to our panel. We want the no thank you button as well because we, again, we want to give them the option here. So if they decide to not purchase the private coaching session, we are going to send them to the down sell, which is the group coaching session. So it's a little less expensive. All right, so now that we have our options here, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this panel so we have a clean working space. Okay, we'll go ahead and save again close and I'm just going to move this no thank you button down here because that's basically where we want it we don't want it to be in such an obvious place because while we definitely want them to know that they have options because at this point remember they've purchased the course so to get to this page they've already purchased our sales funnel course and now we want to sell them on private coaching sessions okay so We'll just go ahead and leave this down here. And what I want to do is actually use a form to create the application process. So it's great that we have this here and it's saying applications will be accepted until. So again, we're giving them that sense of urgency that they need to sign up and purchase this coaching session, because if they wait till tomorrow, chances are they're going to forget, but we want them to think about, Oh, I need to hurry and get that because I don't want to miss out on this opportunity. So let's Let's go ahead and we'll just move this down here. Now, if you left click on this form, you'll see up here it says this is a mailing boss form. Now, a mailing boss form will automatically go into our mailing list and then they will, it can trigger an autoresponder to send a sequence of emails. But for this purpose, we actually want this to be a contact form. And the difference is because we can add information in this field and then it will send us an email and say, you know, this person has requested a private coaching session and then it will give us all that information basically in the form of an application so that we can review that. Um, that's really important when you're asking for specific information for your business. So let's go ahead and just delete this and let's choose a contact form to add instead. So we'll just go down. You see there would be the email marketing forms and here is the contact form. So we'll go ahead and click that. Let's just drag that to our panel here. We can shrink this in. 
Now let's go ahead and we want to customize this, okay? But the first thing that we wanna do before we start customizing the field is we wanna make sure that after they have completed this form, they go to the checkout process because we do not want them to be able to check out for this private coaching session until they have completed the application, okay? So what we can do is go click on the Buy Now button and go to set link because this is where our action is. Now you can see now it's connected to the upsell product, but we need to actually get the link for this purpose because we need to redirect them after they complete the application. So we're just gonna highlight that and copy and we'll click cancel. We'll go back to our form here. We're going to left click in the form and we're gonna go to configure set fields. And you'll see here the very first form that comes up is the redirect after the submit. So we just want to click in here and then paste. Now we need to enter the email address that we want this application to go to when it's been submitted. So I'll just go ahead and enter my email address. And we will definitely want to make the subject something that we're going to rep recognize when we receive it. You've received an application for private coaching, and that way when I receive this email with this as the subject line, I know exactly what the email is and that I need to address it immediately, okay? We can set a um, successful message or saying that they've required. I'm just going to go ahead and use the default, so that's fine. If we go to fields, here is what we want to add to get them thinking about their business and the private coaching. We want to add these pre-qualification questions that they will fill out in the application. What kind of questions do we want to ask them? We're already asking for their first and last name, their email address, and their phone number. So let's go ahead and ask them some more specific questions. So um, we need to choose the way that we want them to answer when we add the field. So do we want to have them answer our question in a text form? Do we want them to create a password? Do we want a radio box where they basically can select one choice of multiple? Do we want them to choose a calendar date? Do we want them to have a text area where they can add multiple lines of information, basically like a comment box? Do we want them to answer in a check box form? So basically a multiple choice where they can check all of the boxes? Or do we want them to select from different options or choose a date and time? So what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and choose a text box and we are going to call this, uh, we're going to ask them in this box, what are they promoting online? So let's go ahead and we're just going to say, and now we need to create a tag for this. So we're just going to call this so that we recognize the information when we receive the email. We're going to say this is required. So we're going to say, yes, it's required. And we're going to say save. So now there's going to be a text box on our form that has that asks them this question and requires the answer, okay? Let's go ahead and add an additional question here. So let's ask, what are they wanting help with? Now we want them to be able to choose multiple options of the choices that we're giving them, okay? So let's go ahead and choose a check box so they can choose multiple answers. So we will add a tag of, we'll just call this options and we will ask our question. We want to make this required and let's go ahead and start entering in our answers. So we'll just say lead generation and we'll just copy this and paste and save. And let's go ahead and add. We'll just copy and paste and save and we'll just say strategy. We'll just add funnel building and we'll copy and paste here. Okay, so you get the point here. So these, this is, would be the options that they can choose from. So let's go ahead and we'll save that. And we'll say that our form is complete, even though I definitely would ask them more questions like, what are your goals in five years? You know, what's the biggest challenge that you're having? You know, and then give them a comment box where they can ask any additional questions. And we can actually do that by clicking here. We'll choose the text area box and we'll just say comments question mark. Let's go ahead and just copy this 
and we'll add that for the tag. And we won't say that it's required because maybe they don't have additional comments. So we'll click save and then we'll save again. So now you see we have our form is bigger here. We have more questions that uh, we want them to fill out and they can select the boxes here. So let's go ahead and we'll just click save. And that's fine. So now when they complete the form, it will send us an email with a subject line saying you have received an application for personal coaching. And then as soon as they click submit, they will be routed to the checkout page where they will then purchase the one hour coaching session. Okay. So now we can actually just delete this buy now button because they're going to fill out the application before going to the checkout. So we'll click delete. And we can actually just add this little um, arrow. We'll just turn this right side up. But if you notice, we have not yet told them how much this coaching session is going to cost. So let's just add that there. Just move this around a little bit. Uh, so we definitely want to do that. Uh, we don't want them filling out the application thinking that it's free and then they go to the checkout page. And now we've received an email for the application, but they have not even checked out yet. So uh, we definitely want to eliminate that and we need to put, you know, up here we'll say, and we'll go ahead and save. And that's fine. And we'll close. And let's go ahead and just make this a little bit bigger because we definitely want them to see the button. We don't want them to just skip out of here because we have also promised them a product, okay? So let's just go ahead and we'll edit the button and we'll just make this text just a little bit bigger in the headline so it's easily seen, but we don't wanna make it too obvious, right? So um, we can actually add in here, no thank you, I will just take my course for now. And we can drag this out. Okay, now we'll go ahead and save again. Now all we need to do is go and edit our mobile view now because that's we always want to make sure that we do that. And I personally just like to do that um, Every time I complete a page, I go immediately to the mobile view, and that way when I'm done, I know that all of my pages have been optimized, okay? So it looks pretty good so far. Let's just go ahead and um, we'll move this down to the bottom because we definitely want them seeing all of the options before they go down here, but we do have a little bit of work. So let's go ahead, we'll click in the headline here. We'll go to general settings. It is a neutral text, so it allows us to edit the mobile view from here. So we'll just go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. We want to make our image bigger, so we'll go to edit element here. And let's scroll down to lateral spacing. And let's go ahead and just make this a little bit bigger here. Uh, we can make this below the video because we definitely want them to notice the video right away. And then they'll see their blueprint. Uh, this all looks pretty good. It's all lined up correctly. We can make this just a little bit bigger. So let's go ahead and just, there we go. Um, let's go ahead and make this box just a little bit wider so that it accommodates all of our elements there. Come to lateral spacing. Let's make that a little bit wider there. And since we changed that to a seven, let's go back up here and change this to a seven as well. That way they are the same width. And you see our form is a little bit wide. So let's go ahead and edit that. So we'll just bring that in just a little bit. There we go, much, much better. And then let's go ahead and just put this text on two lines here. So let's make the box or the button just a little bit more narrow so that it makes it, there you go, much, much better. Let's add a little bit of space at the bottom here. Okay, so it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and we'll go back to the desktop view. And of course we wanna save, that's fine. And we'll close. And let's go ahead and look at the live view. So we'll preview.
And here's what our upsell page will look like. So we're selling our personal coaching. We have the price here. We have the application. We have our video where we're going to introduce ourselves and we're going to tell them in video and in writing all of the amazing things that we're going to do for them in our private coaching. And if they choose to not purchase, they can click here to go to the downsell item. So now that we have designed our upsell page, in the next video, we're going to design the next page in our funnel, which is the downsell page. So until then, go build it with BuildRaw. Hey y'all, Bridget Bartlett here. I am the local business marketing training and support specialist with BuildRaw. Welcome back to our extended funnel challenge. In the last video, I showed you how to customize and design the upsell page of our funnel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to design the downsell page to hopefully capture an additional sale before delivering their front end offer. So we're going to be designing this page here, which is the group coaching session. So let's get started by entering our BuildRaw back office. Since we built our sales funnel in the Cheetah Builder, let's go ahead and enter that. And the sales funnel we're working on is the upsell funnel here. So we'll edit site and we want to go to the downsell page. But before we do that, we want to basically make the downsell page a similar replica of the upsell page. So I want to show you a really, really simple tip to help us do that. So before we enter the downsell page, let's go ahead and enter the upsell page. And what we want to do is save this panel so that we can use it on the downsell page. So to do that, we just want to left click in the panel here. And you'll see you have this little save element option here. So let's click save element and we're going to call this upsell panel and let's save as a personal element. Now from here, we can also enter the downsell page. So let's just go ahead and do that here. We'll save and exit. And you see, we already have from the previous trainings, the elements that we need on the downsell page. So we need to have our buy now button and we need to have the no thank you button because if they don't choose to purchase the downsell item, they will go to the thank you page that has the front end offer, which is the course that we sold them for them to get to this point. Okay. So let's go to retrieve that panel from the upsell page in the personal section and we'll select panels and we'll click panels here. And you see now we have the upsell panel. So let's just go ahead and click the plus sign here to add it to our page. So now instead of having to replicate all of this information, we can simply just use the previous panel. So let's go ahead and pull the elements from this panel to our panel that we're working on. So to do that, we can drag, but if you see, if it doesn't automatically go above the panel, you want to definitely change the sort order. So we can do that by clicking in the edit element and we could go down to advanced and then we can just move this to the top. So I just click it a few times and now you see it's on top of that panel. So we can just move this here just to get it off of this panel here. We'll do the same thing here. So we'll click in that and then edit the element. Let's go ahead and move it to the top and we'll just move that here. Now we can go ahead and delete this panel and have a clean working space. So on this downsell page, we don't necessarily need to have a application process, okay? Because this is going to be the group sell, the group coaching session. So let's just go ahead and delete this form. And for this one, we're just going to have a button. So we're going to have a buy now button and we're going to have a no thank you button. And the no thank you button is going to go to our course. And we actually have this down here. So let's go ahead. It's already a button. Let's go ahead and make sure that it goes to the thank you page. So let's um, set the action and we want it to go to the thank you member access page. So we'll click select. And then now we can delete this button because we already have our no thank you. Just delete. And we want our buy now button to go to the downsell sales page in our super checkout. So let's go ahead and we want to select that here. So we want them to be able to purchase the downsell product by clicking on that button there. So we'll click select. So let's go ahead and save since we've made some changes already. And that's fine. Now the next thing we want to do is we don't want to have this image here because Creating a customized business blueprint is something that we're only offering for a private coaching session. But let's go ahead and change the image to another image to entice them about the group coaching session, okay? Just to give them a little sneak peek of what it might look like. So we'll just edit that element here. We'll go to general settings. And I've already created an image that we can use. So I'm just going to select that here. 
And now we just have a picture of a computer with a Zoom meeting, okay? Same thing here, we can just um, add all of the benefits of the group coaching sessions. And you know that's basically what we wanna do. We wanna sell them on that. We can say um, limited time offer, and we can add some more text here. So we'll just go pull out this panel here. We'll go to add elements. Let's go ahead and add a H4 title. And let's just give them some information about the group coaching session. So we'll left click in the box and we'll left click to exit that. Let's just go ahead and arrange this a little bit to make it even. We'll just stretch out this box to expand it. There we go. So we can change this here to, we'll just say register for our next class. Let's just go ahead and make this two lines. Let's drag this down a little bit. We can keep this timer here because we definitely want to encourage them to act now so that they can get this special offer because if they choose to not purchase this, we're going to basically say, you know, this is $29 a session, but if they act now, they could get it for $10. So um, we definitely want to give them a one-time offer for the group coaching session inside our funnel. So let's go ahead and we'll just add some more text here. So we've got elements, add text, we'll add an H2 title. And let's go ahead and just type in to give our special offer. We'll say only $29. And then let's go ahead and add some more text to give them the special offer. This is a little bit larger than I anticipated. Let's just change this to an H4. Okay, and then let's go ahead and just make this on a different line. We'll just stretch, shrink this down just a little bit. And then let's go ahead and just change the color of this. We'll just make it um, stand out more. Maybe we wanna change it to red. And we could actually add an animation to this and we'll just make it flash. So we'll go to We'll just set the time and we'll make it flash here and we'll just make it infinite. So it'll just keep flashing. Okay, so we definitely wanna play around with this. We wanna make our offer stand out a little bit more, but you get the point here, okay? So here's our buy now button. We would wanna change this and make it you know, a branded color. We can move this up just a little bit. Um, so now we have our downsell page that simple, okay? It's all set up. Now when they decide to not purchase the upsell item, they're going to come to the downsell page. So we're giving them one, one more opportunity, okay? So our upsell item is going to be more expensive. If they decide no to that, then they can go to the downsell item, which will be a little bit cheaper, okay? And if they decide to not purchase this, they go to the thank you page to access their course, but we're also going to be promoting again our other offers. So we're gonna have the course and then we'll also include the upsell item and the downsell item on that thank you page, okay? And we'll also add our lead magnet to that thank you page. So on the thank you page, it will have all of the products that we are offering. Let's go ahead and check the mobile view and just make sure that it all looks good. So it looks pretty good. Let's just move this button down just a little bit because we want to make this below the price. So we'll just keep clicking in the box and moving it down until it's where we like it. Let's go ahead and we'll make this button just a little bit smaller. So let's click to edit the element and let's go to advanced. And then we will adjust the lateral spacing here to make our button just a little bit smaller. Let's add a little bit of space at the bottom here and it looks good. So let's go ahead and we will save. And let's go ahead and look at the live view of our downsell page. And on this video, of course, you want to have you as the coach presenting yourself and talking more about what they can expect in the group coaching sessions, okay? And you also wanna tell them how to access their course. So you are presenting this page and everything that you're offering in this video, okay? That's really important because it's also part of positioning yourself as the authority. By the time they work their way through this whole funnel, they should feel like they know you and are comfortable with you. It's part of building 
building that know, like, and trust factor. So now that we've designed our downsell page, in the next video, we're going to design the next page in our funnel, which would be the thank you page. So until then, go build it with BuildRaw. Bridget Bartlett here. Welcome back to our funnel challenge. In today's video, we're going to design our thank you page, this page here. This is the page where we're going to deliver our lead magnet, front end offer, upsell item, and downsell item. However, since we've restricted them, your prospect will not have access unless they've purchased them. So let's get started by entering the Cheetah Builder inside our Builder All back office. We can access that here. We'll just click enter. And the website that we're working on is our upsell, downsell sales funnel. So let's go ahead and edit site. And then the page that we want to edit is going to be our thank you membership access page. So let's go ahead and edit that page now. And then the previous training, we already have the access buttons and the products that we want to put on this page. Now we just need to design it. So let's get started by adding a panel. Now this first panel that I'm going to add is actually going to be a blank panel because what I want to do is promote on top the upsell product, which is our private coaching. And the reason I want to do that is quite honestly, it's our most expensive product. Okay. So I want to definitely promote the private coaching here. So I'm just going to add some text here. We can add an image. So we'll just go to elements. Let's add an image. We'll just choose this one here. And we're going to need some more text. So we'll just choose some smaller text here. And since I am branding myself as the authority, I want to add an image of myself. So let's go ahead and we'll just add that here. Let's go to general settings and select file. And we'll add the image here. We'll shrink this down just a little bit. And we can change this text. Just say welcome. And then we could add some text here to explain who I am and how I got started coaching and how much I would love to have a private one-on-one -on -one coaching session. And then I want to add that button here. So let's just go ahead and add some text. And let's just go ahead and we'll just copy and paste this just to have more text. And we'll just stretch this out. And of course, we want this to look much better. We may even put a video here to just say more about the coaching or more personal experiences we've had with marketing or whatever that we're coaching about. And then let's go ahead and just add this upsell button to our panel. Now, it looks like it's going to be under a layer of this panel. So let's go ahead and we'll change that by clicking in the button, going to edit element. We'll go down to advanced and then we will just change that order to be on top. And let's go ahead and justify this to the left. So we'll just double click in the box and we'll click left there. Looks like we need to add a space here. So we definitely wanna play with this text. This is not the text that we would leave here, but you get the point, okay? So let's go, we'll just leave that there and say that it's perfect, even though we definitely do not love this. Um, we want to now promote these other three products, okay? So let's go to add, and we wanna add another panel. And let's go down to the offer wall. And we actually have a panel here that is congruent with the style of the rest of our funnel. So let's just choose this one. So now we have six options here and we actually only have four products inside our membership area. So let's go ahead, we're just gonna delete these three. And we could actually reduce the size of this panel here since it's a little large. There we go. And then we want to add our products that we have here. If we want to change the sort order of these panels, all we need to do is go click in the panel, edit element, and then you can actually go to order panels just so that we can see this better. And then let's actually drag this top panel to the bottom and then we can click move. So now we have our top panel on the top and then we have the panel that we're going to delete here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and change the product name here to be our lead magnet. So we'll just call this lead magnet, even though we would obviously not keep that as lead magnet because that doesn't tell our lead or prospect anything about what we're offering here. But for the sake of organization, 
in the beginning, I definitely want to put what we're actually going to put here until it's all organized, okay? The goal in a sales funnel, especially with this many pages, this many steps, we want to stay organized so that we don't confuse ourselves and we don't have someone getting lost in our funnel, okay? So I always say, get the organization done first and then you can tweak it any way you want and design and change colors and make it pretty okay let's go ahead and we'll double click in here and we'll just change this name to be our front end product and this is going to be our downsell product because remember we are already giving them access to the upsell product in the first panel we created so let's go ahead and call this downsell product and let's go ahead and get the action set for our buttons. So now we need the lead magnet membership page. So we'll go ahead and click there. And then we need the front end product page. So we'll go ahead and click there. And then now we need the downsell. So we'll go ahead and choose the downsell membership page. Let's go ahead and save. And that's fine. So now that we have our buttons set, we can delete this panel and have a clean working space. And then we'll go ahead and save again. So now we have this page here where we are promoting again our upsell offer. And remember, as they're going through the funnel, we always want to offer a discount. So if our upsell offer was $147 in the very first page, the very first time they saw the upsell offer, then we definitely want to give that as a discount. But then here we want to promote it as regular price because we wanted to create that sense of urgency and say limited time offer while they're going through the funnel, but also maintaining our integrity and then charge them regular price here, okay? But again, we still want to use every opportunity to promote our other offers. So we'll just say that this is okay, even though definitely not happy with the design, but like I said, you get the point here. And then again, down here, we just want to tell them like, hey, you know, here's another opportunity, or if you purchase these, here are your offers. So we want to change the images here, obviously. So our lead magnet, let's go ahead and edit element. And we can go to general settings and let's change the image. And we will add the image of our lead magnet here. And remember we offered them the one book and then on the email confirmation page, we offered them two additional books to compel them to confirm their email. Okay, and we'll change this to our front end product, which was our course. So let's go ahead and we'll add this image here. And we'll just stretch that out a little bit. And then our downsell product was the group coaching session. So let's go ahead and grab an image for that one. And we'll just stretch that out a little bit. So now, even if they have not purchased the downsell product or the upsell product, they still have the opportunity to purchase here, okay? So we'll go ahead and save again. So the only thing we have left to do now is just make sure that the mobile is optimized. So let's go ahead and enter the mobile view. And we probably want our upsell button to be below the text. So we'll just click in there and then choose the down arrow to move. We definitely want some more space at the bottom here. So we'll click in the button and go to edit element and we'll go down to advanced and we want to add space at the bottom and we can do that simply by dragging that there. It looks like the rest of everything looks good. So there's no more work we need to do there. Let's go ahead and go back to the desktop and we want to save. And that's fine. And let's look at the live view. So here's what the live view of our website looks like. Obviously, again, we would want to work on the design just a little bit, make sure it's all branded to us, change the colors of the buttons. But other than that, you can see the functionality and you can see the purpose. And it's always to not only deliver the product, but also give them the opportunity to purchase our other products as well. So now that we've designed our thank you page with restricted areas to all of the products in our funnel, in the next video, we're going to start designing and complete our restricted areas, starting with the first one, our lead magnet membership area. So until then, go build it with Builderall. Hey all Bridget Bartlett here. Welcome back to our funnel challenge. In today's video, we're going to design all of the pages in our restricted area to deliver the offers in our sales funnel. Since this is such a simple process with Builderall, I'm going to show you how to do them all in this one video. So we're going to create the lead magnet membership page to deliver our lead magnet. 
the front end offer page to deliver our front end offer, which is actually a course. We're going to create the upsell membership area, which delivers the scheduling calendar for our, our private coaching, which is the upsell, and then the scheduling calendar for the downsell membership area, which is our group coaching. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter the Builder All Back Office and go into the Cheetah Builder. And we want to enter our sales funnel, which is the upsell funnel. So we'll click Edit Site. And before we start designing these pages, you'll notice that each of the pages have a little dot on here. These dots represent the membership area. So each of these is a restricted membership area. And you see the coordinating dots down here with the member area settings. The very first step I want to show you is how to easily duplicate a panel inside the thank you page. So let's go to edit page. And this is the thank you page that they land on at the end of our funnel, okay? And they can only get access to these products here if they have purchased them. But we don't wanna have to recreate this every time. So what I'm gonna do is save these two panels and we're going to use them and edit them on the other membership pages because we wanna create congruency. And we also wanna give them the opportunity to access these other products no matter what page they click on. So let's first save this panel. We can left click in the panel and click save element. And let's call this restricted header just so we know which one it is, save element. And then we're going to save this panel as well. And we're going to call this restricted offers and save personal element. So now let's go ahead and start with our first restricted area, which is the lead magnet membership page. So we'll click here, save and exit. And if you remember from the previous training, we had set this page up to let us know this is our lead magnet membership page and we need to give them access to download the lead magnet that we offered them. Let's go over to personal elements and go to panels. And we want to add the two panels that we just saved. So let's start by clicking the plus sign for the restricted header. And then we will add the restricted offers as well. So now we have exact copies of the thank you page. But since this is the lead magnet membership page, we want to promote the lead magnet on top. And this is going to be the same for all of your pages. So let's go ahead and we're just going to change this image to be the image of our lead magnet. But we actually already have this built in. So let's go ahead and save this. And that's fine. And let's go to the front end sales page where we already have the panel built for our lead magnet delivery. So let's scroll down here. So you see we have this panel already created. So why would we recreate it, right? Builder is all about saving us time. So let's go ahead and click to save this panel and we will say lead magnet panel and save element. Now let's go back to the lead magnet membership page, save and exit. And let's go to the personal element and panels. And let's go ahead and add that panel as well but obviously we need this panel on top. So let's left click in the panel. We'll go to edit element. And then on the right hand side, you see order panels. Let's go ahead and move this panel to the very top and then click move. And now we have this panel at the top. So since we have all the elements that we need on this page now, we can delete this panel by clicking in the panel and then clicking the trash can for delete. So since this is already set up, we can actually delete this panel as well. And we want to change this image here since we already have the delivery for our lead magnet up here. We want to change this panel to be the other offer. So the only offer that's missing here is the upsell offer. So let's go ahead and change the image and general settings. And we could choose to change the image to our customized business blueprint that we're going to help them create in our private coaching session, or we could show an image of you or the coach to just add a little more personal touch. And basically you're selling yourself. So it's really up to you. I actually prefer the image. It just seems more personal. So let's go ahead and select the image and save. Let's reduce the size of the image by dragging on the little blue dot there. And let's change the name here to upsell offer, even though obviously we would not leave that as upsell offer. We would want to call this private coaching, but for the sake of the demonstration and the tutorial, I want to show you so that you can keep track of everything that you're working with here. So we'll just call this upsell offer. And we want to change this action here to be the restricted area for the upsell offer. So let's go ahead and click there because we don't want them to access it unless they've purchased it. Okay. So we'll click select and then again, let's save. 
And of course, we always want to check the mobile view. However, the beauty of being able to reuse saved panels is that we have already corrected the mobile view, but it's always best practice to check it anyway, because you do make edits and changing images. Maybe it just doesn't look right. You always want to double check. So let's look through here. Everything looks good. So let's go back and let's just save again because save is our friend. And let's go to the next membership area, which is the front end membership area. So we'll click here. Now remember on this page, our front end offer is going to be a course. So this is the page that we want to deliver the course on. And we have a few options here, but let's get started by adding a panel. And if you go down to where it says membership area, you can actually select a course template here. So let's go ahead and click here. So now we can edit, this is actually called a rotation banner. And we can actually edit this to show each video that they can work through and the modules for each of the sections. So this is a great way to deliver a course. Another way you could deliver a course is within the e-learning platform. But for the sake of this video, I just wanted to show you how simple it is and how many options we have to be able to add a course here, okay? And this is a whole other tutorial on how to edit rotation banners. So we'll save that for a different time, or you can always check the knowledge base for more training on rotation banners. But again, on this page, in addition to the course, we want to give them the opportunity to access the other offers. So let's go to our personal panels and we'll select panels here. And then we will click the plus sign for restricted offers. So now you see we have the original offers from our safe panel. So the only thing we need to do here is change this option because we have the front end product up here, which is our course. And this is going to be the only missing offer, which is going to be the upsell offer. So let's go ahead and change the image here. We'll just edit element, go to general settings, change image. And again, we'll just choose my image here. We'll shrink the image down just a little bit and line it up. And we want to change the action of the button to be the restricted area for the upsell offer. So we'll go ahead and select that. And we'll just change this to upsell offer. And let's go ahead and save. That's fine. And close. So now we have the front end membership page. We are delivering our course that they have already purchased and we're giving them the opportunity to access these other products in our sales funnel. So now that we have this page, again, let's go ahead and check the mobile view. Everything looks good there. We do wanna get rid of this panel or if we wanted to show this panel on the desktop but not the mobile view, we could always click here and then just click the hide element. And now you only see that panel on the desktop. But let's go back to the desktop view and we'll just delete this panel. And we'll go ahead and click save again. And that's fine. And close. Now let's go ahead and move on to our upsell membership page. So we'll click save and exit. Now on the upsell membership page, remember we added our calendar because they have to purchase an, a private coaching session and then they will get access to our calendar. So this is definitely a restricted area, but let's go ahead and just add some text up here. Actually, we could go back to our thank you page. We'll click save and exit. And since we've already created this to explain our upsell offer, let's just go ahead and save this panel and we'll add that to our other page. So save element and we'll call this upsell header and save personal elements. Let's go back to the upsell membership page and let's go ahead and go to personal panels. We'll select panels here. We'll go ahead and add that upsell header. And of course we want to move this panel. Let's choose a panel here. Let's go to order panels and let's just move that down to the bottom and click move. So now we have our panel up here at the top. Let's go ahead and just delete this panel here for a clean working space. And we'll just change this text here. We'll say schedule below. And we can move this up just a little bit. Of course, we want to make this more attractive at our branded colors. We don't need this button here, so we'll just delete that. And then once they schedule their private coaching session, they will go to our thank you page where they have access to the other products. But let's go ahead and still add at the bottom here our other offers. So we'll go to panels. 
and we can go to restricted offers and then we can add that panel here at the bottom. And since this is actually our upsell offer, we don't have any missing products here. So let's go ahead. We just want to move this up just a little bit, this private coaching session. We can do that by expanding this panel here. So let's go to sizes. We want to definitely change the height of this panel, minimum height here. And we want to move this up. And we will move this up just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Looks much better. Let's check out the mobile view. And it looks good, but we do have the iframe is, see how the uh, we have the line over here? That's definitely not something that we want. And we can easily fix that by clicking in the iframe. I'm going to edit element. And then let's go ahead and just adjust the size. So we just want to add a little bit more space on the left and right. And let's also add some space at the bottom here. So we'll just expand that there. Make sure we're in the iframe. Let's go to the minimum height and let's just make that a little bit larger. So you see that gives us some more space here, but too much space. So we'll just play with this a little bit until we get it exactly how we want it. It's a little bit too small. You can also adjust here for a more fine-tuned adjustment. Okay, much, much better. So it all looks good. Let's go ahead and go to the desktop view and we want to save. And that's fine. And close. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next page, which is our last restricted area. This is so exciting. And it is going to be the downsell membership page. So let's go ahead and select that and save and exit. And here is where they're going to schedule their group coaching session. So remember, they have to have purchased a group coaching session to reach this page. After they have scheduled their page, they will go to the thank you page. So let's go ahead and we just want to add a panel to the top about the group coaching. Let's go to add and elements. Let's just add an image here. So we'll just add by dragging the image here. And Let's go ahead and shrink this down just a little bit there. Move this text out of the way. Let's go ahead and change this image to be the image we're using to represent our group coaching. So we'll choose this one here. And of course, in this information here, we want to discuss all the benefits and how amazing our group coaching is. Maybe we want some testimonials, you know, lots of options here. Uh, we're not really selling at this point because they've already purchased. So we definitely want to give them information about what to expect and maybe um, different things that they need to prepare to join the group coaching session. Okay, so let's just go ahead and we'll say schedule below. And we could still add our element here and the other offers. So let's just go ahead and we will add that panel here by clicking the plus sign and our personal elements. And now we have all of these options here. And again, the only missing product is going to be our upsell offer, which is the private coaching. So let's change this image here by clicking in that panel. And then we will go to change image and then we'll choose my image as well. And we'll shrink this down. And then let's change the name here to the upsell product. And let's change the access action to be the upsell membership page. So we'll click save and that's fine. And as always, we want to check the mobile view. So we'll go to mobile. And again, we want to adjust the spacing for the iframe so we can click in the iframe there, go to minimum size. We're just going to increase that minimum height there. And you see, it's still just a little bit too small. So we'll keep going. I like to actually keep going until I can't see that scroll bar on the side there. So we can actually shrink this up just a little bit. And we need to add some space to the side so we can go to advanced. And then we'll just minimize the left and right spacing there. So we no longer see that scroll bar. So all of that looks good. So it looks like the only thing we may want to do is just move the title of our page up just a little bit. Maybe want to move this text up a little and then have our image there. Other than that, everything looks good to go. So let's go ahead and go back to the desktop view and save. And close.
Okay, so now that we have designed all of the pages in our restricted areas to deliver the ebooks, the upsell, the downsell, and the front end offer, in the next video, we're actually going to test all of the funnel and we are going to look at every single page and discuss how it all works together just so that you see the final product. So until then, go build it with Builderall. Hey y'all, Bridget Bartlett here. I am the local business marketing and training and support specialist with Builderall. Welcome to step 15 of our sales funnel challenge. We've already created the blueprint, pages, email list, booking calendars, checkout items, membership areas, and then we even designed all of our pages. So today we're going to do an overview of our funnels so you can walk through the customer journey and experience the buying process for yourself so you can truly understand the power of automating your sales process and lead generation. So, so far we have created a lead magnet to get them to opt in by giving them an ebook. We've created an email confirmation page so that they can confirm their email so we can create a double opt in for a higher quality of list. We've created a front end offer, which is a sales funnel course that they need to purchase. Once they've purchased that, they get access to the upsell offer, which is private coaching. If they decide to purchase that, they will check out, get access to our scheduler page. And then once they've scheduled, they'll go to the thank you page to get access to all of our items in the sales funnel. If they decline the upsell offer, they'll go to the downsell offer, which is a group coaching session. If they decide to purchase that, they will go through the checkout process. They will go to the thank you page of that offer where they schedule their group coaching session. And then they will also go to the thank you page with all of our offers. We've also created four restricted areas or membership areas. So once they opt in, they can go to the lead magnet page, which is an automatic release as soon as they opt in, no purchase necessary but they do have to make a purchase to receive access to the front end offer, which is our course, the upsell offer, which is the scheduling for the private coaching, and then the downsell offer, which is the group coaching and scheduling. Okay. So let's go ahead and access our funnel and we can do that by entering the cheetah builder in the builder all back office. So let's go ahead and click enter. And before we start testing our funnel, let's make sure that it's actually published. So you can click the three dots here and click publish to make sure that our site is ready to go. So we'll click close and then to get the link, we can click go to website. Now to test our funnel and make sure that it does not pick up any of our previous registrations and make sure that it is a working funnel for someone that is not logged in as we are, we want to go to guest and create a guest window. So we'll go ahead and paste the link. So now this is the very first page that our prospect or lead will come to. If we decide to opt in, go ahead and click download now. And here is where we are going to register inside our membership area to get access to our lead magnet. So I'll go ahead and fill this form out now. And we'll click confirm. And now we come to our email confirmation page where we have actually giving them a bonus offer to confirm. We've added a booster online sales ebook as well as a checklist. And we have this flashing next step, check your email to confirm. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now you see we have two emails. So we have our welcome to our members area where we have the email address that we've registered into and our password and thank you for your application. We also have our email confirmation where we need to click to confirm that we are opting into the list. Okay, so let's go ahead and click now to confirm. And then we come to our first offer, which is the front end offer. Okay. So this is the sales funnel course that we are offering. In addition, you can download the lead magnets that we promised them. If they decide to purchase the item, they can click buy now and we'll go ahead and say, yes, we are going to purchase the course. So we'll click continue and let's go ahead and enter the information in here. And we'll go ahead and click pay now. And once we've purchased our front end product, we'll go ahead and click continue. And now that we've purchased that, we have the opportunity to purchase our upsell, which is our private coaching. Okay. So to purchase the private coaching, you need to apply. Once you fill out the application, you'll go through the checkout process and then you'll have the opportunity to schedule. But what if we decide not to purchase this? We can click here to say, no, thank you. Just take me to my course for now. And here we come to the group coaching session, which is our downsell offer.
So if we want to purchase the downsell, we can click here. If we decide we do not want to purchase that, we can click here to go to the thank you page. But let's go ahead and let's purchase the group coaching session. So we'll click buy now and we will go ahead and make the purchase. So we'll click continue and let's go ahead and enter our information. And we'll go ahead and click pay now. And we'll click continue. And here is where we want to schedule our group coaching session. So let's go ahead and we'll just say that we want this one to be scheduled. Let's go ahead and enter our name. And also notice that we have the opportunity to access any of our other items here. So we'll go ahead and schedule our class. And now we come to the thank you page. So here again, we are promoting our upsell product because that is our private coaching, which is the most expensive. And we can also offer any of these products here. So let's go ahead and click this since this is an item we've purchased and you see that we do have access to schedule there. Let's click here because we did not purchase the upsell product. If you click there and you have not, you will not get access to that. Okay. If we wanted to access our lead magnet, we could click here and you see we have the opportunity to download there and we also have our other products as well. If we want to access our course, we can click here and you see now we have our course and we also have the opportunity to access our other items in the sales funnel. So now that our funnel is complete, the next step in the customer journey is going to be the follow-up process. This is done with emails. Since we've already created our list, in the next video, we're going to create an email sequence to follow up with our prospects. It takes seven to 10 times for a customer to be exposed to your business or brand to take action. So this is an incredibly important part of your sales funnel. So until then, go build it with Builderall. Hey y'all, Bridget Bartlett here. I am a local business marketing, training, and support specialist with Builderall. Today I'm going to show you the very last step of our sales funnel challenge. I hope you guys are excited just like I am. We've already created and designed our sales funnel and created our email list. However, right now we do not have any emails going out to our leads. Since 80% of your sales are going to be made on the back end of your funnel, following up with emails is incredibly important in the conversion process. So let's dive into the Builderall back office and access Mailing Boss, the email autoresponder we have available in our tools. We can do that by clicking enter here. And the first thing we want to do is go to workflows. And let's go ahead and we will access our workflows here. And you see, we already have one called sales funnels. So let's go ahead and click there. And now we have the list that we created for our sales funnel, but now we need to add an email sequence. Okay. So we can click here to see what our options are. We can set this to unsubscribe a user. If they subscribe to this list, maybe we want them to unsubscribe to another list. We can insert a tag. So if we wanted to have one email list and then tag it for each funnel that we are creating, we could do that here and then just send emails to those people who are tagged. Uh, we could also copy the subscription subscriber to another list. We can set up an email autoresponder to automate an email to go out to them. We can create an email sequence, which we're going to right now. We could also create an autoresponder instant message and send them a text message or a SMS message as soon as they subscribe. What we want to do is actually create an email sequence. So let's go ahead and click here and we don't have an email sequence created yet. So let's go ahead and create a new one and then we'll call this sales funnel sequence. We have our lists connected. We want to send them this email, the very first email in our sequence, as soon as they subscribe. So we only want to send it to future subscribers only. If we wanted to send to current and future subscribers, we could do that as well. But the common way to do this when you're first setting this up is just send to future subscribers only. Now, how many emails do we want to send to them in this sequence? I always recommend starting with at least seven so let's go ahead and we'll just choose seven and then click create. Now, when it comes to customizing these, we can choose the first email autoresponder to edit. So we can go ahead and click here. We can actually just set this individual campaign email to go out as soon as they subscribe. So this is the first email in our sequence. Okay, let's go ahead. We'll just click the box here and we can start editing this individual email. So you see here, we have the name, it's an autoresponder, we have our list connected, here's the sequence that we're sending out. If we wanted to add any segment filters or a lead score, we could do that. Here's where you could add the tag. Um, that's really useful if you are tagging all of your pages or items or anything, you could add a tag for this to go out 
only to the people who are tagged with that tag, okay? You can also add extra recipients, but we're just gonna go ahead and click Save and Next. Now we want to edit our email. Now you can, and I definitely suggest, creating a template. If you click here, you see that I've already created some other templates for a training I did in my course called Build a Raw Pizza. So if you chose one of these templates here, you can click Choose, and then it'll actually pull in your template. So this could be our first email. The great thing about having a template is it's branded to you. You can make it look beautiful with all the information that you need and then just come back and edit the text or the images to serve your purpose in the sequence, okay? So let's say this is a great first email. This is what we want to send out. If you guys want more training on editing in the email editor, uh, make sure to look in the knowledge base and you'll see lots and lots and lots of training on how to actually edit your emails. So now that we have our first email, let's go ahead and click Save and Next. And we always want to make sure that we have the name of our business or the name that we want to represent as soon as they receive the email. So if you get this email from me, it would say from Bridget Bartlett. If I had a business, I would want it to be that business, okay? You can also add your reply to email and you can add your send from email. But keep in mind, if you don't have a domain connected, you're not going to be able to choose your own email. So it's really important if you want to have a great campaign, make sure to upgrade to one of the paid plans where you can have at least one domain because you need to have that sent as your business domain. Uh, it'll also increase your inbox ratings. So it'll actually go from the spam to the inbox, which is the goal, right? So uh, you can have the sent to their email or their name. You can choose any of these tags here that you want to um, send them to. So we can change our message right here. We'll just say, Thank you for signing up. If we wanted to add their name after that, we could click available tags, add first name, and then it'll say, thank you for signing up, John. And then you could put an exclamation, exclamation if you wanted to. We have some advanced features. So if you wanted um, to set a action when a subscriber opens your campaign, you can do that here. We're just gonna go ahead and click save and next. And then here you see uh, we can set this to after they subscribe or we can say after they open a campaign, a weekday, after campaign activation, lots of options. And that really just depends on your business and how you want these things set up. Okay, You can choose the autoresponder to be sent out one day as this is set up one day at after they subscribe at the same time as the subscription. So you may like this because if you are promoting your business to people in other countries, that may make a big difference. If it's you know noon your time, it might be four in the morning someone else's time. So you may like to have that. However, if you want to just send this out immediately, you could choose zero days and that'll send that out immediately. You can also choose a time here. Again, if you wanna send this out to future subscribers only, you could do that or send to cur current and future subscribers and you could activate at a certain time. So if you're setting all this up and you don't want it to be activated until tomorrow at 1 p.m., you could put that time here. I always recommend sending a test email as well because you wanna make sure that there are no spelling errors, that your images look great, um, that everything is set up exactly how you want to. Sometimes when there's default information, you forgot, you know, maybe I didn't change my company name on this list list or you know something that will remind you every time I always suggest send a test email uh, you can also click here and it will run a spam check and it'll tell you if your email is likely to end up in the inbox or the spam folder so you always want to keep your spam score from zero to five zero would be the best and almost impossible uh, but a 1.2 is okay and then you can save and activate or you can just choose to activate later i just like to click save for sure and then we'll just activate later because I wanna make sure that I've tested all this out myself before I actually go live with this. And you always want to make sure that your email sequence is tested and tried and have multiple people test it. You wanna test it on multiple browsers, lots and lots of testing that goes into this before you actually start promoting your funnel, okay? So on a second 
email in our sequence. You see we have the options here. We can click to edit. We can add tags. We can also change the time. Let's just go ahead and edit our email. It's the second one in the list. So we'll go ahead and click here and we'll just start from the beginning. So same thing, we have the second email in our sequence. It's set to autoresponder. This is the campaign that we're working on. We have our list selected. We don't want to add any extra filters or tags or lead scores. We don't want to add a campaign recipient. So we'll just go ahead and click save and next. Now here you could like I was saying, you could edit this and be, you know, any, you could make this any background, you can make it totally different. But again, I can't stress enough how you need that congruency. So while you can import an HTML from a URL here for your emails, you can upload a template. I just love keeping everything that I do inside the builder all dashboard. So let's just go ahead and we'll just select our template that we already used. And again, we have our beautiful Builder All Pizza Shop and we want to customize this and make this our own. We have available tags here that we can use, um, just lots and lots of options, but you get the point. This is how you would set up the second email in your sequence. Go ahead and click Save and Next. And then you want to put your message here, your reply email, make sure that your sender is the same. Again, you really want to have a domain that you're sending this from. So for example, here it says info at hairsalon.com. I would definitely want this sent from info at hairsalon.com because I want them to recognize my emails when they come in and I want them to end up in their inbox, not their spam folder. So. Uh, again, you can say whether you want to address them by name or email. This is set to email, so we'll just go ahead and keep it as that. We don't want any actions taken upon the subscriber when they open the campaign, so we'll click Save and Next. And here, after they subscribe is when we want this to go out, but we want it to go out actually two days after they subscribe. So since we're sending the first one out at zero days, then the first day after they subscribe would actually be day one. Okay. So let's just go ahead and we'll put day one and then we'll choose same as subscription, even though we could choose any of these times, uh, we could send to current or future subscribers. Since this is a brand new list with a new sequence, we don't have any current subscribers. So we'll just go ahead and keep this as is. And we could change the time to activate, but since we're going to do all the activations at one time, we'll just go ahead and keep that the same. Always send a test email because this is a completely different email. You always want to make sure every single email you test so you could do that by clicking that and then typing in the email that you want this to go to okay so definitely choose a different email than the one that you have set that's sending the email we could go ahead and check our spam score here, which I always like to do as well, every single email, because sometimes if you have an affiliate link or you have too many links or not enough text, or you're using words like click here and uh, make money online or something like that, that will increase your spam score. So having this little test to make sure that you are within the range is really incredibly powerful. So let's go ahead and click save, and then we will activate later. And now we can move on to our third email. So we'll do the same thing. And we already have our third email here. Let's go ahead and update the information. All this is going to be the same as the first two emails. We'll do save and next. We can change our template. So we'll click here and we want to edit all of this and then hit save and next. And again, change the company name, the reply email, the send from email, how we want to address them. We want to add our subject in here and we can click save and next. And we want to change this to day two and we'll keep it as same as subscription time, send to future subscribers only. We'll activate this all at once, send a test email, check the spam score, and then we'll click save and activate later. So you wanna do the same thing for the last four emails here. And when it comes time to activate your emails, that is a really important thing. You see here that it says paused, paused, paused. You want to make sure that you activate these emails or they will not send. So before we activate our email sequence, let's go ahead and save our workflow. And then we could go up here to campaigns and email sequence. And you see that we have our sequence here, okay? So 
to activate, we can go to update sequence and we have all of our options here. We'll just go ahead and click save and edit sequence emails. We can edit all of these emails at one time, but the way that I showed you actually allows you to set all the settings per email and upload your template. So that's really important. But if you want to go through and activate all of these emails, what I like to do is just go through here and then you can click activate. So see now it's changed to pause. Okay. So that email is now active. Now you can click activate here. And now it's changed from pause to activate. And then you can do the rest the same. Once you've activated them all, you click done. And then if you go back to the workflows, you'll see that now these emails are active, but we did not activate these. So they're still paused. Okay. So now every time that someone opts into our sales funnel, it will immediately trigger an email to go out to them. And then the next day, another email, and then the next day, another email. This is so important when it comes to following up with your sales and leads. So now that we've created the last step of our upsell and downsell sales funnel, I hope you can see the value in automating your lead generation and sales process, as well as the value in Builderall. I know this process looks simple, but creating this on any other platform would take multiple integrations and subscriptions. This will increase your time learning the tools as well as your cost for multiple subscriptions each month. So make sure to click the link in the description to try Builderall yourself and become a member of a great growing community of entrepreneurs like you who are just as motivated to take action and achieve massive success. So Look. Hey, they designed a platform for you all. For you all. What you want, what you need, build a raw. Build a raw. Build it up. We just answering your call. Yeah. We're the one stop shop if your back's against the wall. Against the wall. Yeah. yeah, you're a build a raw rock star. Rock star. Hey, you can build it all. Go hard. Go hard. Sign up and you'll see we got it all. Yeah. We're the one stop shop if your back's against the wall. Against the wall. If you're trying to build the name of your brand, they came with a plan. Get your name in demand. Yeah. With build a raw, you can save your day in advance. Keep the apps automated. So you barely need to glance That's fact. Listen, think of all the power that you hold Whoa. It's a new globe, everyone is grabbing for their phones. phones Imagine the control, build your passion on your own And the more that you connect, the more attraction they will show Whoa. Not only a sales funnel, look, this is more advanced yeah. This will help you compete, but have the upper hand Keep your products in demand It's all in one spot, you don't have to calculate And feel afraid with your thoughts no. Automate your response, drag and drop your site Or oh. click map your fans, see the pages they like uh -huh. Or use the video rap or capture they sites Design your own app from scratch, just how you like it. Yeah. They designed a platform for you all. For you all. What you want, what you need, build a raw. Build a raw. Build it up. We just answering your call. Yeah. We're the one stop shop if your back's against the wall. Uh -huh. wall. Yeah. yeah, you're a build a raw rock star. Rock star. Hey, you can build it all. Go hard. Go hard. Sign up and you'll see we got it all. Uh -huh. We're the one stop shop if your back's against the wall. Design wall. with y'all in mind. Let entrepreneurs shine. Tired of the nine to five. You starting your own grind yeah. and it's all right. All they got the tools you need the connection they designed is truly unique never been able to express my views with ease i move release double click and do i'm pleased my clients as well tired of the hoops and leaps too many things in the way of my truth and dreams a builder all rock star is what you really are tune in on the internet will make you a star you don't need to study hard all it takes is a start work every day and move higher till you way off chart stay on never sleep on none of the apps it's a free sign up just so you know in advance uh -huh. Build the rolls for the legends, nothing's holding you back You got the tools and the plan, you Look, can stay on track Believe hey, that They designed a platform for you all, for you all. What you want, what you need, build the raw. Build, build it up, we just answering your call yeah. We're the one stop shop if your back's against the wall, against the wall. Yeah. Yeah. You're a build a raw rock star. rock star Hey, you can build it all, go hard, go hard. Sign up and you'll see we got it all yeah. We're the one stop shop if your back's against the wall, against the wall.